A Stanley woman convicted of first-degree intentional homicide learned her fate in a Dunn County courtroom. We, the jury, find the defendant, Ezra J. McCandless, guilty. It will be at least 50 years before McCandless ever sees the outside of a prison. This video contains the interview of a man whose girlfriend cheated on him and then killed the other man in an effort to get back together. In the summer of 2017, 19-year-old Ezra McCandless met Jason Mengel, a 33-year-old National Guard medic. The two quickly entered a romantic relationship and began living together by August. In the early fall of 2017, she found out she was pregnant with Mengel's child. Shortly after getting an abortion in October, McCandless began an affair with 23-year-old barista and substitute teacher Alex Woodworth. In February 2018, McCandless told Mengel that one of his friends sexually assaulted her. He believed her until some time later when he saw phone messages that showed the encounter to have been consensual. He also discovered McCandless's affair with Woodworth. McCandless regretted the end of the relationship and blamed Woodworth for things ending with Mengel. On March 22, 2018, McCandless confronted Woodworth at his home and Mengel followed, worried about her intentions. After a brief police check, McCandless and Woodworth went to a public location to supposedly deal with their issues. A few hours later, about 4.15 p.m., McCandless knocked on the door of dairy farmer Don Sippel. She was covered in mud, blood and bruises and barefoot. She asked for a doctor, claiming she was a victim of an assault. She was taken to a local hospital where she asked for Mangle. She initially told officers, paramedics and hospital staff that she could not remember what had happened. The next day, the police discovered Woodworth's body hanging from the back of McCandless's 2003 Chevy Impala on a dirt road near the farmhouse. He had suffered 16 stab wounds to his head, neck, groin, and torso. Is that Alex? Yeah, Alex is a great dude. You seem like a good guy. Met him there the other night. Well, like I told you, on our little phone conversation there, I, I don't know that maybe just people in the area or community that heard or something reporting. Okay. that realized the impact on you as well. You know, oh, yeah, it sucks. Like, I'm, uh, I was socially ostracized pretty much from a lot of this stuff. It's like, for a long time, like, my closest friend, friend group so was really, like, off-put, so it was like, I mean... I only yeah. had detectives talking to me. My real, my real friends from before weren't really talking to me. Yeah. Alex always stuck on my side, but it was, it was rough, man. Well, I bet, it, I bet it was. I know when when we were talking to people, yeah, they, they kind of didn't want you around and because they didn't know what was going on. Yeah. And like, Even just little things. I would look in the paper and be like, oh, I'd like look and see what was going on with the case and be like, oh. Anybody was seen walking or jogging or biking in this area, like, ah, why would they go biking? You know, it makes you like, paranoid. Like, what the hell can that mean, man? Well, we can get going. I don't want to grab your whole afternoon, from you, but as you recall, we did a download of your phone to yeah. early yeah. on. Um, yeah, so there's just some questions in there on that information, too, that we have some questions on. So cool. this might seem a bit random here. Um, John the Mustache. Okay. Yeah, what all transpired with that? Um, I think you guys have kind of talked about a lot of that already, but you got those pictures. Um, this came off your phone. I don't know if you remember that conversation, John. And Yeah, Cooper, tell me who, who that conversation would have been between. Oh, this is this is Ezra and John. Yeah, Ezra and John had that conversation, right? Yep. And do you know when that was? Um, I mean, just I mean, I guess I'm guessing it would be the dates that are on here. Right, right. But um, when were you gone to the military? I was gone. It was uh, actually. Mingle served in the National Guard. During these times away from home, McCandless would engage in affairs. Because this alleged assault happened while you were gone in the military. Roger that. Okay. This is going back into... So... All right. I have this stuff written down. So apparently the fourth was when she said the first assault happened. 
I was at recertification on the 5th, Monday, and that's when she said assault 2 apparently happened. Because like she said, there was an assault at night and assault in the morning. Yes, yeah, so the night of the 4th? The, the night of the 4th, I believe, is when everybody, Ryan, all of them were drinking together at, at his place. Yeah, John's place. So, like, they're all drinking together, and she, from what she had told me, with, with as much of a... The problem is, like, dealing with, like, so many, um, like, the narrator is just like, I don't know if you're a trustworthy narrator, you know, in any situation. So it's like, she said that they got, she got so, so drunk, she was puking and all this kind of stuff, and woke up and felt like something was going on, but then passed back out. And then stuff happened in the morning, is no. what she said. But then it was like the, the stories kept changing from both of them. Like the story kept changing from John, the story kept changing from her, you know. And I was like, I, I don't know what you I mean, just highlighted that and you just put it in assault. John Hansen was a friend of Mengel. McCandless accused him of assault in an attempt to hide their affair. Yeah, I just put, that's what she indicated to you, that these dates happen. Yeah, because once you talked to me about this stuff, I was like, we got to go like do something, even though it's like way past, you know, the date. Because like, that's what's important to me. On this, it's February 11th, and she's still talking to him. That's what I said. I was like, I don't understand, because this, this is what I meant. Like, I was like, I'm like under the impression, like, why would you keep talking to someone who assaulted you, but also the night that I found out about all this stuff from her, I had talked to, I had talked to John, and I was like, hey, so what the heck happened, man? Like, what's going on? And he said, nothing happened. We never had sex. You know, he had, he said all these things to me. I was like, okay, cool. Well, this is what she said to me on my phone. You know, and, and then he was like, oh, then he changed his story again. And then I sent some more stuff, and then he changed his story again. And I was like, okay, I don't want to talk to you about this, because you're obviously not... Every time I give you another detail, you change the story. Mm-hmm. So I was like, here, you just talk to Ezra instead. And then I turned the speakerphone on, and I slid the door to make it sound like I was leaving the building. And then it sounded like he was, like, leading her. It was like, it only happened once. It was consensual. This and this. And it's like, it was just, the tone was very strange. I was like, oh, I don't like this way this is going. So I was like, well, both of them don't seem trustworthy at this point, but I'm just going to err on the side of caution, and we should probably go in. You know, and then we came down here and she had to do all this stuff. But okay. So you were the one that urged her to report it then? And I was like, well, if, I mean, I didn't know if it was an assault or not because I did. Okay. And where did that conversation take place? That was at that hotel. Like, I had gotten her a hotel when she was in town, and then she called me back because she was acting all weird and making, like, you know, because she was like, what motel? I uh, was that like Scottish Inn? I don't think it was the Scottish Inn. It was a different one. It was over by like where the clinic is. Okay. So what was the significance in you taking these photographs? Oh no, wait. It was over by Clancy's. Not Clancy's. Uh, what's the Irish pub? That's by the hospital. Oh, uh, across the street. O'Leary's? There's an atta- there's an attached motel. Go attached. I think it's okay. the one that's attached to that one. Okay. Did you kind of call her out on these? Uh, or yeah, I was like, well, what the is that why you took pictures of them? Yeah, I was like, what's going on? What is? What are your guys? Your guys' stories don't make any sense, you know. And she's talking this way after the fourth. And the yeah, third. I was like, so and she's like, well, it's like a court because between all three of them, they were into this crazy existential, like nihilistic stuff. Like they're reading all these books, you know, like. There's one about this, like, neo-Nazi guy, and, like, it's just, like, watching the world burn because nothing matters in life, you know. No one has to be born, and there's the only rules you make are, you know, like, there are no rules. It's like, you can do whatever you want to do, it's just the repercussions. And it's like, I don't know, these books are pretty heavy, dude. Like, I don't know, for a girl who's younger and very impressionable and also, like, kind of spiraling through depressions because, like, she had the you know, kind of like the postpartum depression thing from the abortion. Mm-hmm. So this is probably not great reading material to be like ingesting right now. Like you're already at low, you're unemployed. It's just you know, the holiday seasons and stuff like that, like post holiday seasons, will have a lot of depression issues with people around that time. Absolutely. So it's like I, I don't know what. what it's like it's like everyone was talking about stuff, but not talking to me about the stuff. Okay. And you said it was the three of them into it, her, John, and... Her, John, and Alex. Yeah, they're and all... And your roommate? At no, no, no. A different... Oh, Alex. The deceased. Oh, okay. 23-year-old Alex Woodworth was another man that McCandless was having an affair with. The two were closer in age, 
and had more in common. I recently released another shocking case on my Patreon. This video shows the interview of a man who, after being involved in the murder of a man and his wife, later ended up shooting a 12-year-old boy in the head. You can watch it right now at patreon.com slash stranger stories plus. Is that who she's talking about here as well? Yeah. That this page. Take some reading maybe. Oh, this is the stuff that she wrote, right? Is this like a whole, like this is how it goes? Yeah, I think so. Uh, but it's who the Alice was she's referring to there. Yeah, that's the Alice uh, Woodworth. So. Okay. So she figured you had been talking with him as well? With Alex? Yeah, doesn't she? Uh, yeah, what is I cannot have any. I cannot have you discussing my case or what? Oh, this must be. This was the assault case, I'm assuming, right? The John? Yeah. The John case? The John case would be assault with John. Because she had said that she had gone to Alex's house after... So, like, initially it happened. I was still gone. Yeah, so she said she was still having at your house. That's what she was saying, that it happened in my bedroom when he dropped her off. But, I mean, I... Okay. It's all, like, these, these narrators are, like... Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that, you would say, is Alex Woodworth there, not a Euro man. This is Woodworth, yes. Is there anything else in here? I don't think so. Let me just take a look and see on that last page. And the last time we talked, a lot of this, why we wanted to talk today is the last time we talked, nobody had time to go through all your phone download to, and now there's things that we got questions about, that's why we probably just wanted to figure this all out. Um, and we kind of wanted to wait until we had question, all the questions so we could make this a one-time shot. That's the racist thing. Yeah. yeah, so where is this board at? Is this in the men's bathroom? At Racy's. Okay. And how how did this come about? Did you write this on there? Negative. Do you know no. who wrote this? I was I told her this was in the bathroom and I was like, I don't know what this is all about. But so I, how you just happened to notice the phone number and it was yes. yours? That's a dream. Oh, well, I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like is it because someone had mentioned to me, like, oh, is your ex your ex girlfriend's number up there now? And I was like, What are you talking about? And it's like in this yellow, so I was like it looked like someone had written it and then tried to bleach it off. Did you message her? There's some messages about apparently black marker erases and turns yellow or something. Yeah, I said like I tried to like get some of the rest of it off, but I ended up just going over the top of it because I was like, well. Okay. When did you become aware of that? I spoke with every tape that. I had messaged her about it. It's okay. kind of hard to remember. So when the when the picture was taken, that was probably I was because I went in there and looked like, hey, this is pretty fucked up. Like, because like she was going through this situation where everyone was talking shit about her and making it out to sound like like a whore. I was like, well, that's when the day that happened. Oh my god. Okay. Do you remember what her response was in reference to that? And I may have not read it. But maybe it's in there. That's fine. You, there's nothing on that. Um, That's from my did did uh, was, was she getting phone calls? I have no she, idea. She she did indicate she all of a sudden people are calling her, oh, soliciting. She, and also she used both bathrooms a lot of times because like she, I mean, it's kind of like one of those situations where I was like, I don't know what's going on. I mean, she was gender neutral for quite a while. You know, she like after like the uh, when she was younger all the assaults and stuff should have that happened. She decided she wanted to portray more of a, a mask thing. She cut all her hair. She, like, dressed more like overalls and the guy's kind of clothes because she didn't want to be, like, seen as a target anymore. So, like, a long time when we first started, like, hanging out and dating, she dressed very masculine. She just, like, um, she didn't want to portray her feminine side that much. So she would... And, like, Racist has always been kind of one of those places where they're more understanding. Like, now that Jeremy's gone, especially, that, you know, there's, it's just a bathroom. You know, people just need to go in and avoid. It's not like you have to have a certain set of organs to use a bathroom. Sure. Unless you need tampons or something specific, you know. 
So the life starts now when you photograph that. Yeah. Is that why you photographed it? I wrote over the top of it because we had had a talk the night or two before with her father, and I was like, maybe it would make her feel better. So you wrote that? I wrote the life starts now. Yeah. What do you mean by that? So her father, I had talked to her, and she, her and her dad never really talked that much about serious stuff. Um, not Jimmy, but... Um, McCandless's biological father was not a part of her life. Her mother's partner, Joe Shane Carlin, adopted McCandless when she was four years old. They divorced when McCandless was 12 years old, but she continued to have a close relationship with her father. Joe Shane? Joe, that one was your prison? Sir Stanley? Yeah, I think sure. that's Joe Shane, isn't it? Yeah, just last question. Okay, I believe so. So, like, she had sent me some stuff that her father had talked to, because she said her dad talked to her, and, like, they spent you know, a good hour or so having a conversation about, like, you know, all this stuff happens, and it doesn't mean you need to stop. It doesn't mean you need to stop trying, because, like, you need to take control of your life. But, uh, what do you say, like, you uh, give her a time, because, like, when they finish their conversation, it was, like, 12-something or 11-something or whatever, it's like, this is it. I was really, like, fucking life starts now. Like, get your shit together. Stop worrying about all this other stuff. Stop worrying about, like, your mistakes and the bad things that you've done. Just... Life starts now. Okay. On the Instagram stuff, example two, would that be uh, Julia? Julia, um, her friend? Yeah. It's like, yeah, example o, o two. Yeah. That's Julia. That's Julia. Yeah. I can't remember her last name. So... Uh, would Julia post? Yes. Okay. The day this kind of went down. Is it a driving day? Well, you're going to the laundromat. Yeah, oh, the day when everything went down. Oh, okay. yeah, so you're going to the laundromat. This last kind of year, you're telling her, Ezra, you're going to the laundromat. Yeah, we had a conversation a little bit the night before, and then I woke up early, and I ended up taking another nap. But I was like, well, Alex, my Alex, gave me an earful about her still getting mail at the house. And he's like, I was like, you should probably change your mail over. She's like, yeah, I'll do that. I'm going to go to the post office and stuff. And I was like, cool, sounds good. Here, or was she going to go I think there? she was going to go and see like She said walk. So, right. um, so I was like, okay, and I went to go do my laundry, so I went to Racy's. Oh, I dropped my laundry off, came back to Racy's, and I figured like, I was going to run for a little bit, and then I noticed her coming in, and I was like, okay, because she had never said anything about coming to Eau Claire, which was weird, because we usually she would communicate stuff like that, she was like, coming around, and she just had this, like, angry, pissed off look about it. I was like, okay, what? Didn't know what had happened. I didn't know she'd also been pulled over or something like the night prior or two nights prior, Joe had said. So, like, she wasn't even supposed to be driving. He had taken the keys from her. So you were surprised. I was, I mean, I didn't know about the keys. She she didn't say she was coming to town. No, because, like, I knew she had barely any funds left. She had just started, um, she had just started working at the, the school, but she was also... Yeah, she was working at the school, but she was also, she got her TV test, like they had done the TV test, and she was going to, like, um, get it read yeah, the next day, uh, so she could start working, like, in, as a CNA again or something, and I, I had mentioned to her, like, oh, yeah, if you need scrubs and stuff to borrow, like, that's cool, I can give you scrubs, because, like, it's hard to grab, like, People that start off doing it don't have like eighty bucks to spend on a set of scrubs. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. once we had once we had chit chatted a little bit, like she looked she looked pissed. I was like, hey, if you want to pick those scrubs up and like you know, get something to eat after, like that'd be cool. Because like congratulations, like I'm glad you're getting stuff together. Like, and that that conversation took place over the phone or when that was, was at racing. Yeah, racing. Yeah, because okay. like she went with Maxwell to drop off art. Uh-huh. So like she traded him a painting that used to be in the bedroom for some paintings to get done. Okay. And then she had come back. Apparently she had come back when I had already been gone to go give laundry. Okay. And you talked the first time she was in there or when she was first going. 
and Candlest began to act oddly by this point, upset over the direction her relationship with Mingle had taken. Yeah, when she was coming in and then leaving. Okay. You talked inside or outside or? Outside, I believe. Outside. Okay. And the earlier conversation where she talked about um, going to the post office and stuff, mm -hmm. was that over Instagram or was that over the phone? Do you remember? That's a long time ago, so. Probably, I think it was Instagram. I don't think we were using Messenger anymore, so I think it was Instagram. Okay. She kept, like, blocking and unblocking, blocking and unblocking, and getting pissed. So I was like, whatever, it's your prerogative. Did you guys have many actual phone conversations, or were they all pretty much <coughs> messages through some sort of... Once in a while, she'd call, but, like, not a whole lot. Like, in, like in general in the relationship, or... Uh, after... After all this stuff. After all this stuff happened, and she was kind of living in the stand -like. Once in a while. I think she called me maybe, I would say it would be less than 15, but more than five. Okay. So, so to, your, to your understanding, she was, when you would have been messaging her, she was still in, in Stanley that morning. Yeah, that's what it was. Oh. And the only way she could contact you was with Wi-Fi, correct? Yeah, she didn't have a phone plan. I think she just had, like, a... It was like an iPad or iPod Touch, something like for like music, but she used it as like a social media device. Okay. I don't think it was an actual cell phone. Okay. And I guess I'm not sure. City of Eau Claire, they don't have public Wi-Fi throughout Negative. any area. Or no. I mean, some of the parks do, but okay. it's kind of spotty. Okay. So you'd have to be at a business or at her you house. You'd be like a, a residence or like you know, something that you knew the Wi-Fi for, like... Gracie's, you know, a friend's house, like Julia, like, uh, Julia lived in, I think Julia lived in these, those dorms by Phoenix Park, kind of, okay. you know, the big, the new high-rise ones by, uh, yeah, right, um, right off of the, the confluence area. area. Yeah, okay. When do you think you wrote The Life Starts Now on there? Was that the day of? Without a cell phone, tracking McCandless's movements becomes more difficult. Or did, did you write it and take a picture of it? Because we can tell by when you took the picture, if you remember the re when you wrote in relation to taking the picture. I can't really recall. I know I took the pictures. Could have been the same. Day? I don't know. I wrote over the top of it, but I can't remember when. Um, it's kind of the flow on the 22nd of March. Um, she says, and maybe I'll just read this to kind of see if it jogs your memory. I thought about it a lot, and I think I'll call Wintership to return the tattoo gift so I can for sure pay for therapy. Yep. Okay. Well, do you know where she's going for therapy? She was going somewhere in Stanley. Right, and I believe her family had got her set up with a therapist or something over there. Okay. Because it was within... Biking, I think she mentioned once it was biking distance. Or maybe that was her work. You know, she went anywhere around here after she made contact to report with, uh, like, crisis and the investigators when she report, uh, reported the Hanson assault? Uh, I gave her a bunch of numbers. Like, the, the military has, like, one of those like phone numbers you can call that gives you, like, local, like, but a lot of them were only one or two sessions they would do. And then they were paid afterwards. But there was, I can't remember who was Bolton. Like, the, the fellow from Bolton gave me some options, too, or gave her some options, too, on that stuff. And I don't know if she ever partook of so any of those. Bolton might have did some they might initial have screening. And, yeah, because, like, she met with the big, the big like, he looks dangerous, but he's a, he's a teddy bear. Okay. I can't think of his name. From the Bolton Refuge House. Bolton, okay. Because she was, on, she didn't feel like she would go anywhere at some point. Because like, her mom and family didn't want her. Jimmy and them didn't want her. Or not Jimmy. Um, Joe and them didn't really want her. I didn't want her. And by me, like, she, mm -hmm. I think her initial plan it seemed like was she just going to move in with Alex for a little bit? Was she going to try to move in with John? Was she going to try to move in with um, Bree? I think it was Bree for a little bit. She talked about moving with Bree. It's like. I don't know what she, if she knows what she's doing. Like, it's like 90% of the time she had these aspirations for stuff. It's like, even now, like, fucking, she was sending me letters for so long, and it's like, oh, can't wait to, like, hang out and do it. It's like, I don't think you're in the same place as us half the time, man. Like, 
a lot of these ideas and these things that you're going through in your head don't they don't correlate with reality, you know. Mm-hmm. And my roommate Alan's always had a problem with her because he'd be like, Some of her stories don't make sense, man. It's like think about the amount of life she just had. And then think about putting all this stuff into it. These stories that she's had. It's like when was she doing this when she's doing this? I was like I don't know, man. Like I've never like tried to run the numbers. It's like, well, why don't you try to run the numbers, man? Because it's a lot of like, when when did school start? When did this happen? When did? Because like, you know, I started becoming friends with her friend Hagen, her ex, one of her ex boyfriends, Hagen. Okay. And I was like, did you guys like live together for a while and stuff? He's like, yeah. And I was like, but like, how does this all fit in together? Because mathematically, a lot of the stories like they just don't sew up straight. Is that? Is that the friend that uh, the brother possibly sexually yeah. assaulted her? But then there, there was also like the fact that she she talked with him afterwards too. Like okay, they seemed familiar after that. And it's like, is this just like a victim thing? Like, because I know there was a neighbor or something when she was young, a family member that when she was young, possibly one of Joe's neighbors, like that still lives across from him, a teacher at her high school who had a kid and wife that apparently moved away after whatever had happened. Um, just all these things. And I was like, I talked to her for so long ago, like, you should probably go in and get some of this stuff. Like, you should talk to somebody about this. Because it's not yeah. just shaving your head and pretending you're, like you're a guy for like a couple of years is not going to fix the kind of trauma that's going on in your head right now. Like, you've got issues trusting people. Like, she would go up and down and come to like, emotional situations. It's like, McCandless may have experienced trauma during her childhood, although it has never been verified. However, much of her pattern of behavior suggests she used such accusations to manipulate others and benefit herself. You know, there were times where she would make me just get in the car with her and she'd just drive crying. And, like, there was a graveyard out um, somewhere by Stanley. Apparently someone who's super important to her, uh, some woman, I can't think of her name, but she died younger, uh, I don't know if she helped raise her or something, but she would just go out there and like just sit by the grave and cry sometimes. And be like, if she would have been around, like uh, she would have helped me get my life back, back together. You know, like my family just sees me as a burden. Like my mom sees me more as a, like a friend than a child. My, you know, and it's like, well, you do ostracize a lot of people, man. You push people away a lot because you you have this coping mechanism of just running from problems. You just run from a problem, and then you expect someone like in your family to save you when they start to feel scared, like that you might be teetering, you know. Okay. Um, what did you mean, uh, this is a message that you sent. Um, you're, is that you, the Doc Wolf? That's me. Um, please tell me you didn't risk the only place to take you in without communicating your tensions. Is that... That was me. Joe Shane took you in, yes. or... So, like, that is after I talked to Joe. I think I talked to Julia, Joe, and Rosie. And Rosie's her mom, right? Rosalie Anderson. That's her yeah. first name. I, it's been a, I'm trying to push a lot of this situation out of my mind, like the people. And I wasn't tied into a lot of that stuff, so I'm trying to pull it up and think. This is after I had talked to Joe outside the cop. So I still had, had Rosie's, I think. And, I, and he had said, she's not even supposed to have the keys. I took the keys from her. What is she doing in Eau Claire? And I was like, uh, I don't know. She was supposed to get the kids off the bus. And I was like, oh, shit. So then I messaged her, hoping she would be on Wi-Fi somewhere. So I was like, well, if she's going around the city, she might be on Wi-Fi. And I was like, he was already, like, threatening to kick her out because she brought the, she, she had brought a cat. She had done all this stuff. She was ignoring. She was being, she was just not being very, um, for the amount of, like, for the amount of uh, leeway she was being given in the situation, like being, you know, just, just, hi, I need a place to live again. All of a sudden, can you help me find a job? Can you help me with finances? Like, I'm like, you're being kind of inappropriate about this. Like, this is the, her mom was like, you can't live here anymore. You're not living here anymore. It's done. Figure it out. So Joe, she showed up at Joe's and Joe took her in. And I think it was mostly a guilt thing because, like, he had never really been, around there after the, the divorce and all that kind of stuff. Like, he was always there, but not really. Mm-hmm. So I think he took her in to help her out, like, and because her grandmother, you know, Terry, they needed help with Terry because Terry was in the process of passing away and stuff. But what was the second half of that, though, without communicating your intentions? Does that mean to you? Intentions of driving to town because she was, she, she, 
she risked she was risking the place she was living without telling Joe, hey, I'm going to town to do and I thought the intention was that she was coming to town to maybe to talk to Alex about the, the letters. Because she had talked she had been fired out up with the other the day before about those journals she had been doing. And she had mentioned, you know, those journals like uh, She got fired up, what do you mean? Well she was just like I need to drop these off with, with these people. And I was like... McCandless was in the habit of keeping journals and even wanted to give some of them to Mingle since they contained her regrets for having cheated on him. I would just send it to him in an email or something. Like people? Like, jo like John and Alex. So like, look, they need to know like, that what this is, what has done to me and stuff. And I was like, yeah, but like, you don't have to do person-to-person -person stuff. You can just send it in an email. You can send it in a letter over snail mail. You can... Like, you could, I guess, drop it off at, the, at a mailbox, in their mailbox, but, like, a stamp is, like, 32 cents, man. Like, come on. You don't have to go there and physically, and she said, like, I feel like I don't have a voice anymore. She kept saying stuff like that, like, I feel like my voice has been taken. And I was like, well, you've done all this therapy work, and, like, your therapist is helping you, and you're journaling this stuff out, and it's making you feel better, you say. So just keep doing that. Like, they already know what they've done to you if they've done this. Like, you don't have to tell them what they've done. They've already known this. So what you mean there is that, she, you know, she's risking her place with Joe Shane by just, just driving just without driving. telling him, hand going to Eau Claire to whatever. Yeah, because he's being super understanding. He's like, one of the, she's like I'm like, where is she going to go after this? So you must have talked to Joe at some point because you would then, um, a bit later here, actually, the time, actually just before, I'm so lost right now. I didn't know he took your keys. I don't know. I didn't know you were coming to Eau Claire. The situation does not look good. Why did you feel that it doesn't look good? What was your because she's going to get kicked out again? Okay. I'm like she's going to be on the street, and I I thought maybe well maybe she's doing this whole thing so her family kicks her out and she can just oh Jason can you help me out or can somebody else save me again? It's like this is not going to happen because like it's not going to be we're going to go back to like feeling sorry for Ezra. Ezra's in Ezra situations because of Ezra, you know. I just know what I saw in your eyes and have a bad feeling. What was your feeling? That she was going to go visit John or somebody and, and like, I, think I, I thought she was going to go visit John or Alex and just like, be like, hey, this is like, drop off the stuff. You guys fucking did this to me, blah, blah, blah. And like, I wasn't sure if, I wasn't sure if the way that, because, like, the last time with the Alex stuff, I was, like, I was worried more for them and, like, them also, because John was emotionally fragile. I mean, he had gone through all that stuff, you know, and even though I, I don't like these guys for what they did, like, one of the last things I, I me and Alex had talked about at his house was, I was like, young like you guys, too, man. I made stupid decisions. It doesn't mean I have to like you guys, but I still don't care about you. You know, you're people. And... Back when we talked before, you talked about this look in her eyes, and, and I don't remember how you described it. Do you remember what that look was in her eyes? Just pissed. She just looked pissed off. And I was like, I was super confused because she didn't look, she didn't look as as fired up the last time we had talked about all this stuff. And I was like, what about today has made this thing worse? Okay. She seemed so no like when we when we talked in the morning before all that before I went to do laundry she seemed nonchalant you know like it just seemed like another day. Okay. Had you seen that look in her eyes before? McCandles blamed Woodworth for Mingle choosing to break up with her and may have been planning to harm him before the day she chose to confront him at his house. Yeah, like when she would be like get in the car, we're going for a drive, like, okay. and then we just go out to like, like I said, like the graveyard, or we just drive to like a anywhere and just you just like usually just need space to like just rant and rave for a while and scream into the into the wind and just be like, Are you done now? Are you good? Are you feeling better? And I think before when we talked you talked about she would get so emotional sometimes her driving was not good and you yeah. had to take over. I would take over a lot of times. And I'd be like, I don't know where we're going but like Okay. Did you guys ever drive out into Dunn County before or towards Menominee area? Oh yeah. Uh, like, when would it be? I'm not sure how, how many times, it was at least three times, but like previously, maybe a month before that or so, like we went on, we went on like Hoffman Hills once in a while, oh. that's nice, you know. Do you remember how you got there? Like, 
what, what route it was? Yeah. Uh, I cheated and used GPS. Oh, okay. I think I put my GPS on at the gas station when you're leaving town towards Menominee. And this one with the quickest yeah. route that... I did know that we passed... We took the route where you passed the little Hobbit house. So you have it. Just like on the right-hand side of the road, there's like a house that's half in the ground. And it has like like a Hobbit front door. I don't know if you've ever seen that. You agree on Highway 12? Yeah, it's like on the right-hand side of the road. If you're coming to Menominee? If you're leaving Eau Claire, I think it's on the right-hand side. Closer to Eau Claire than... It's closer to Eau Claire. There's like okay. cornfields and stuff, but there's a, this little tiny house that's like... It's all covered in dirt. Yeah, yes. I think that's, well, I don't know. I, what, what came to my mind as soon as you said so, it's Northside Highway 12, the yeah, we near E. Yeah. Because when we take that way, you keep going straight, you eventually end up at a church, and you take like a left at the church, and you go around some other windy roads. Oh, yeah. And there's yeah, I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure we're talking the same area. Um, I wonder if there'd be a street view of that on Google. So we can kind of confirm yeah. that. You want to dig up that way? Let's get one up here. The little Hobbit house? Yeah. <laughs> if it's, a, a, it's a cool house. If there's a street view on there, that would kind of confirm that we're talking the same area. So, like, you remember I talked earlier about how, like, her dad had had that long conversation with her about, like, this is, like, this isn't going to define you as a person. You can always change. Like, you've you got to turn stuff around. Like, I'm giving you a chance. You have to be responsible. Like, he, he she pretty much sent me, like, the whole conversation, like, or, like, a uh, abridged version of the conversation. Where is she? What you send it through? Like, through a Snapchat thing. Okay. But uh, that was, like, the time, I think. I mean, I'm like almost 100% sure that's the time that... But that's the actual text portion. So you would have written that. Because of the text is the text, what's actually put in there. That's the time? No, that's the actual time that the message went was right here. So the text is the actual text you take yeah. in. That's what I mean. So I'm just trying to understand. You think that's the actual time? Let me check one more source. Because I think I can still see, I don't know that it's that significant, I just wondered what it was. I think I can see my archived stories, but maybe not. I think that's the 919 life starts now. But maybe I wrote it down. See, here she, she, she messages you. Uh, right here. Although there is no evidence to suggest that Mingle helped McCandless to kill Woodworth or even knew that she intended to do so, the information on his phone will help not only eliminate him as a suspect, but to see if they can find any subtle indication of McCandless's state of mind. So, the author, Dirk Fien, that's yep. Ezra, right? Yep. And then uh, you're on there as a recipient. So she sent Life Starts Now. I was on the 22nd. Actually, it'd be our time. It'd be on the 21st, you know, evening time. Okay. Do you remember when this? she sent you this snap or whatever she sent you related to her conversation with Joe? With uh, 
Her father? Yeah. No, I was trying to look it up, but like, it had been preceding this whole event, you know, quite a bit. I mean, a few hours. I think it was days. It might have been a day or a day. Okay. Because that makes sense then. Yeah, she had the conversation. That's why I was co- so concerned. It was like she had this. She made it almost sound like a life, like life changing conversation with her father, her stepfather. You know, because like well adoptive father. Because he was he was putting a lot of shit on the line. Because like his his family already didn't want to keep doing this coddling thing with her. They were worried that she was just you know going to continue this cycle of creating a problem, needing to be rescued, creating a problem, needing to be rescued, instead of just, you know, she was supposed to go to school, and for the longest time I thought that she got kicked out for something minor, and it's like, it sounds like she just spent all of her money that she needed on other stuff, and she couldn't afford to go to school, so then her family's like, well, we're not going to keep giving you money, because you're not maintaining a good grade, but like, so then she came back and she had to work and stuff, and it was like, well, you can't just keep expecting people to foot the bill for you on these things. Oh, that's the thing there. Do you remember this letter then? Yep, she gave that to Jenna. Or no, Jenna gave, Jenna wrote this, and then I think I left this in the car the day before, the two days before we had talked, and I had written a timeline on the back of it of kind of stuff that had happened, and I was like, this doesn't make sense, guys. Like, this doesn't make sense. Who is Jenna, first off? That's my roommate's girlfriend, Jenna Van de Zand. Jenna Van does the end? Yep. Hunt B A N. Uh, Did you ever phone number two? Yeah, I think this. Well, she was there. For what, well, you were just leaving talking to Alex. I. Uh, you didn't talk to her then, right? No. trying to all put together, you said, after reading this. Canlis wasn't going to give up on the relationship. Mingle was a steady and reliable figure in her life, and she wasn't able to accept that her actions were the cause of the breakup. Because, like, I want, if I, if I can write down the timeline for this stuff, for what logically makes sense, for what I've seen on paper or in, in these situations, and I show this to Ezra, it's going to be like, 
what the hell happened? Like, what the hell was going on? Because, like, that, at that point, I was starting to question a lot of things. Like, I was questioning, you know, the, the aborted child back in October, like, around her birthday. Just, we went to the city and she had an abortion. And I was like, is this my kid? Was this a thing? Like, what, what, what is going on in this convoluted... Do you know what it was? No idea. Nobody, like, it's like, who knows what was going on? Like, because all this stuff, it's like, I mean, it could have been. It could have been. Yeah. Oh, well, we were still like, together back then. But, like, I mean, I was also gone in the Redwoods for a while. So it was like, I was gone most, you know, a good section of November with uh, Josh Trinkler, like, hiking the Redwoods. So, so what do you mean by some of this stuff? So these are, like, times and dates and stuff. So it would be like, I was like, okay. See if I can figure out any of this. You just did this in your own apartment and. Yeah. So, so this February 4th and 5th, is that significant to what you're just showing us? Yep. Oh, wait. February 4th and 5th. February. February 4th and 5th, that was like those two dates. So Assault 1 and Assault 2, all those that were certification. So that's just what we talked about a bit ago. Yep. What are these times? Or how, how do they play into it? I think those are probably templates. I'd say 8. 846, maybe. Okay. Like maybe that, yeah, that could be something to do with the time. How, how, did, how would you arrive at that? That's pretty specific, 339. And I think I went through photos. So like the, she had sent me photos the night before of her, John, and Ryan all drinking and hanging out together. And I think I was trying to figure out the timeline of like, okay, when did this happen? At his apartment. <coughs> and then you were back at our apartment. And then this happened. So I was trying to like figure out what the what the what, what the what was going on like. Okay. So do you remember what the nine oh nine over nine twenty eight is? Is that the February four? Or what's the sixth and Alex? Was the sixth of February she was with Alex? Sixth of February. Oh. Six was when I flew out to Denver with Josh. Sixth of February? Yep. Is that significant? Or no, sixth of November. Okay. So sixth of November I flew out with Alex or flew out to Denver or to yeah, to Denver with uh Josh. And she said that that's the night that he had taken advantage of her. Alex had? Because she said that they watched the this movie called The Little Prince. Is that what you would mean there then? By that date? I'm assuming that's what it is. And then the 7th would be getting dumped. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was... November 6th and November 7th? No, this the dumping would be... This, February 7th, I think. Yep, the 7th of February. Dumped by Alex? <laughs> no, dumped by, like, dumped by Ezra, pretty much. She's like, she messaged me like, I'm moving out. So you got dumped? Yes. Okay. So I was like, oh... You're moving out, and she just said, I just can't be with you anymore. You deserve better. Um, I can't tell you why, but I just can't be in the house anymore. I was like, oh, okay. That's insane. I'm just only doing Army training and trying to relax as much as possible. But thanks for sending us in the message. McCandless did not want the relationship to end, but she could tell Mendel was struggling with her lies. To distract him and hopefully gain sympathy, she used a manipulative tactic to appear as if she was making a sacrifice for him. So what month was this? When she was with Alex, that was uh, when you went in November. Two. Okay, November sixth. Yep. So like the same day, and you flew to Colorado. Yeah, was Denver. I was in Denver, and then I went to California. So that's how you remember that she's with Alex in November. Mm -hmm. That's why I was like, well, this stuff happened in November. She had an abortion in October, on October 6th, like, right around her birthday. So it's like, we got to talk about some of this stuff, because, like, I lost my mind over this thing, like, you know, this, 
like I was torn up inside. Like as soon as we as soon as we were at the clinic, because I thought she had mononucleosis or something. She was like puking every day, fever, like just like not doing well. I was like, you need to go in. I don't have health insurance. You need to go in. Like we can't keep trying to take care of this at home because there's something definitely wrong with you. Mm-hmm. And I had had mono before, so they had told me like I'm like one of these weird carriers where like I have mono in my blood sometimes. Okay. It still like exists in my blood, so I get symptoms once in a while, but I don't actually have it in my whole factory. Yep. So I get to experience mono for the rest of my life, which is great because like sometimes it just like out of the blue I just get debilitated for like a week or two. So I was like, I don't know if that's like something that can happen. Like maybe they, maybe somehow there's a transfer of it somehow because like you're exhibiting the same signs as I as I had when I had mono. Mm-hmm. We took her in, or I took her in, and then within like a couple minutes they're like, oh no, she's pregnant. And I was like, oh, and I was kind of like, oh. All right, like, what do you, what do you, and then she's like, can I get paperwork on it, like, where I can go to, to abort this? And I was just like, oh, okay, well, never mind. <laughs> so do we never remember, been, Do you remember where she went? For the orphan? Yeah. Uh, somewhere in the cities. Any idea where? No idea. I mean, I was there with her, but she didn't want me, like, I was there for a while, okay. but then she told me, I thought she would want me in the room or something, but she's like, no, I can go and... We can come back to that. I kind of sidetrack this from, from that, so... Do you remember what the A is or what any of this stuff is in here? Match 14. Oh, 14 matches up with any dates in there. Or maybe this is what this in here. Because I still have, like... 14 somewhere. Um, I was probably just going to panic when I could figure out, like, am I being messed with here by everyone? Yep. Because um, I did do this. This is the so that's the little prince tonight. That's the assault one and two. And then that was the baby. So, like, what's the little prince? That's the movie that they watched. So, like, when that, when that, uh, if the private investigator had come to visit me, I was already like, I'm so sick of hashing all this stuff out and never look at my phone all the time, so I kind of just wrote some of this stuff down because people have been asking me over and over again. Mingle was slowly trying to unravel the web of lies he had been given and was starting to suspect that the child wasn't his, or at the very least, there was the possibility that it wasn't. If that happened, McCandless knew there would be little chance of talking him into renewing their relationship. So that's the night she said that she had gone over and just hung out with Alex. And they watched this movie, The Little Prince, which is like a, it's like a literary expression of suicide. It's like a relationship between an unintended small child in a new neighborhood with an adult neighbor, which is like apparently an art film. I don't know. It's like a really fetishy kind of thing. Um, okay. So it really went down on the seventh then. <coughs> nobody, nobody knows. Like she said that he he kissed her or something, and she said, "No, I have a boyfriend or whatever." But. So that was like the little prince night. That was like the day after I was gone. I think that's the day after I was gone on my trip. I think I flew up the 6th. Okay. To December. So, yeah. So I was like, this is really weirdly convenient that it almost seems like a day or so after I'm gone, yeah. something is happening. And then you're like creating this, oh, it was a bad thing. Like yeah. this, really, this bad thing happened. It's like, I don't know. I, uh, I'm trying to figure it out. And that was like my rundown for this. Thank you. Look good. Yeah. Those are like people of interest. That timeline and stuff. When did you give that to her? I think it was when we were in the car talking. Like, I had sh- showed her the note that Jenna had. And I was like, she doesn't want to be involved. You know, but like, and I showed her like the back. And I was like, when? What is? What is going on with this? Like, what is going on? And I remember seeing it. In in the car the day that I had gone to Alex and heard she was there with her car parked there because I her car like it had this Pearl Jam CD that when she had been um, she had hit a buggy or something when she was younger like mm-hmm. I'm not sure what happened but uh, ever since then that that track like skipped 
So I was sitting across the park bench, like, waiting for her to come up. I figured, like, okay, this is really long for her to be inside this building. Like, I don't, I'm not getting a good feeling. And I eventually you know, I went up and, like, knocked on the door and stuff. But I had turned the car off because I was just sitting there idling. So I turned the car off because the, the CD was skipping. And I, de- I definitely remember seeing it, like, in the vehicle, like, on the passenger seat or something. I don't know. So when did you give that to her? Because you had made that map, right? Yes, or, I made, like, the convoluted, like, nonsensical. Yeah. When did you give that to her? It might have been, I don't know. Um, oh. Is there... Was it, was it the day this all happened? I don't think it was the day this all happened. It was okay. definitely before that. Maybe I can okay. help with this a little yeah, bit. Yeah, because there was... Because Jenna, <clears throat> it, was the, it was the day that she had been caught, con- that Jenna, it's the same day where Jenna was not going to wake me up. So it was the night, the, the, the day after is probably when I was writing that stuff. I was like trying to figure out, because I probably looked at the note and was like, okay, I understand. And then tried to figure out some convoluted, what is going on? What is the truth here? Okay. Well, as I flow through Instagram here, there's virtually no messages on the 14th and 15th of March between you two. And it looks like she came to town then during that period of time. Okay. So the day Alex, uh, she went to Alex's was on the 22nd. Yes. So if we back up there from the, the 13th, and, uh, the 14th and 15th of March, okay. what was going on there? Were you guys at a motel like the Scottish Inn? There's some photos. Uh, yeah, we went to a motel for a couple of times. Do like you think just that week preceding? It could have been any time in that week preceding. But, I mean, no, not any time, because it had to have happened after the phone conversation with Jenna. Because Jenna wouldn't have written the note unless, it, it was nearing the cusp, like the end of that whole, like, I'm so washing my hands of this whole situation. Even though Mengel had his suspicions, he made efforts to give McCandless the benefit of the doubt. If Pete didn't have friends pointing out the inconsistencies, McCandless may have gotten away with her infidelities without him noticing. Because here I'm defending someone who I'm worried has been assaulted. Everyone's telling me, like, John, that's not his character. He wouldn't, but he's also maybe capable of it. Like, because his ex was like, he might be capable of it. Some of his friends were like, he might be capable of it. But I'm like, I don't want to back anybody anymore. I just want to step away. Because, like, everyone I seem to be getting involved in here is, I, 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 this is they're just not telling me what's going on. Like, I feel like I'm trying to, like, protect some of my friends. But... She's telling me one thing, he's telling me another thing, and everybody, I, I, everyone, everybody involved is just feeding me this stuff, and I'm just sick of it. I'm done. And that's like when I said, I'm done talking about it, I'm done talking about it. Well, and she's communicating with you here. Um, I'm leaving now to head over. That was on the 15th. 15th of November? No, March. March. And then, are you not coming over a while later? And then there's just nothing. Okay. And then on the uh, 16th, hope you made it back to Stanley safely. Sleep well, little lady. So she must have came over at that period of time. Um, so I'm just wondering, you know, if it was during that time that you showed her that. It has to have been whenever... That last conversation with Jenna was. I wish I had. I wish I had that written down somewhere. But no, that's maybe it's difficult to recall. So I don't know. we're talking a year ago almost. It's almost well, it's ago. just when that conversation happened, you know. Um, yeah. So, how many different times was there that you guys stayed in the motel? It's like two or three. There was like, and that was between. When she said she couldn't stay at your apartment anymore. Yes. So February 7th about when you yeah. get dumped. And but March then, 27th. But then it was like, well, this is, ha- this is why we can't stay at the house. And I was like, oh, Jesus Christ, okay. And then it was like, my, mo- my mom is treating me like this. And like, my, well, she's like, I can't be at the house right now. Because like, every time my mom's like, I'm super sad looking. And she's like, stop being so depressed all the time. And she's like, I, I'm depressed, mom. Like, I'm going to do some stuff. And she's like, just get over it. Just get over it. And mm-hmm. it's like, you can't just get over it. It's like, I mean, back then I was still under the assumption, like, oh, my God, she's been a victim. And, like, the only person that's supposed to be taking care of her. And, like, 
you know, one of the people that was taking care of her and like empathizing with her was just like, get over it, like just deal with trauma by mm-hmm. getting over it. And I was like, okay, but also, I don't know. He's like, she had a habit of like embellishing a little bit, so I was like, I don't know what's going on. Okay. Um, do you know which other hotels you would have stayed at? Um, there was only two or three, I can't remember. The one, you stayed at the Scottish one. Okay, Scottish. Or Scott's, whatever in. This one is across from the quick trip. Yeah. It's always like last minute, like, that was the day that I think I called my brother-in-law and talked to him, because I was like, stuff is not going well, man. Like, I'm pretty sure like, my ex is just going to, like, told me she was sexually assaulted. Like, I was freaking out. Like, I was like, I don't know, man. This is bad. Okay. Um, I think that was that group. Yeah, there's like three. There's one... So the Scottish Inn, O'Leary's, and... By O'Leary's, and then maybe one, nor they built yeah. a new cancer place, the new cancer hospital by Sacred Heart. There's yeah. like a motel over there somewhere, like a motel six or whatever. I don't know, it's mostly just oh, like... straight across the street there, yeah. right by Walgreens? I think it was that one. Who would yeah. pay, pay for those? You would? Or? Yeah, I mean, she didn't have any money. So why would you go to a motel, though? Just, I figured she, she had a lot of, there was a lot of times where she was like, well, I've got this stuff going on in town. And I was like, well, I don't want you at the house. Like, and Alex and us don't want us, we don't want any more drama. Mm-hmm. Like, you're going to get your life back together, that's cool. Like, just pay me back. And like, actually, one of those nights, I think it was at the one by the Walgreens, I was like involved in breaking up a domestic assault, and that was pretty weird. Because like a guy threw his girlfriend. So that that's a, a, a good day to, uh, to know exactly what that hotel was. Because a guy threw his girlfriend down the, I was stepping out in the alleyway, into the, the hallway, to go outside and have a smoke. And the, I watched a guy throw his girlfriend down the stairs, and then they were trying. She was trying to play it off like everything was fine, and like a bunch of people he was like, "No, nah, we," because like he was pushing her and stuff. And I was like, "No, nope, no, nope, we're gonna go talk to the concierge about this, and we're gonna deal with this because like you can't just like throw, be throwing people around." And, I mean, just, was there a police report on that incident? I think there was a touch of the girl at the front desk about it. Okay, but the police never talked to you, so you no, nobody. Be- I never was, like, oh. interviewed, but... Because they were just going to, like, leave. He did the thing, and then he, like, grabbed her and said they were going to leave, and I was like, ah, you can't just leave after you threw your girl right now. It wasn't, like, a huge place of stairs, but, like, you know, the stairs go from, like, there to, like, the floor, so you're going down, like, yeah. nine steps. Yeah. Like, the hallway keeps going up. I was like... Mingle appears to be empathetic and compassionate. Often, these types of people are taken advantage of. And that appears to be the case here. No, nah, like, you can't just do this, because you're going to get in the car with her. I don't know if I trust you right now. Yeah, good call. Um, did you ever get to talk to her when you went to the hospital? When she... No, I waited in the waiting room for a long time. That first day? I got there when she was over at the <clears throat> hospital. No, I think I got contacted by, I'm not sure who from Dunn, and I said that they found Monica, Car- Monica Carlson. And I was, like, actually in the parking lot behind the, this police station talking to a cop, trying to find out if they could find her uh, uh, her vehicle because I had talked to Joe about it. I was like, I don't know where she is in town, man, but I did pay. I did pay because she gave me cash to pay for her, uh, her tickets because she had tickets before that. So I was like, I have her vehicle number on here somewhere, her license plate number on here somewhere. So if I talked to this, the cop shop was closed. It was mm-hmm. past five. So I was like, if I talk to him, maybe they can send someone to, like, if they see a crazy painted up car with this license plate number can find out where she is because they said they were going to go to a coffee shop and talk and she's been able for how long and she also was supposed to pick up the kids like none of this makes sense like okay. so I was in the back of here talking to one of the officers and that day you went to the hospital but you didn't get in to see her no they wouldn't let me in I didn't find out until later on that it was like, well, but all this stuff is going. Because, I mean, I came to visit, I think, the next day, and um, Rosie had given me, like, the room number, and, like, everyone kept telling me it didn't exist. I was, like, going from, like, kiosk to kiosk, or, like, help desk to help desk, and everyone's like, yeah, that's not our room number. And it's like, oh, they can't let you in because it's, like, the men- like, the site board. So, like, they don't really, like, unless you have consent. So I was like, oh, okay. Um, so I could call her family. It's like, can I go talk to her? Is that cool? And they're like, yes, yeah, that's, that's why we want this. They said they couldn't be there until later that day. Okay. And they wanted someone to be with her. 
Okay. So I went and visited her, and I, we hung out. We, we played Uno for a little while. Did an art jam, my like doodles and photos and stuff. Okay. Did you talk about what happened at all? No, I mean, I didn't. I, was, I don't think I talked with her at all about what had happened the nights before. I just asked her how she was doing, like, if she was all right, like... I mean, I didn't know much of any of that stuff at the point. Because I was still, like, it wasn't until a few days later where, like, this thought crossed my mind. Me and Alex were, like, eating hot beefs at Ray's. And I was like, where the fuck did he go, man? Like, if he, he's got to have used money by now. Like, unless he had a bunch of cash on him or whatever. Like, how far can you get without using, like, your debit card or something? Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, I don't know, dude. And I was like, this doesn't make sense. Like, whenever a drunk kid falls into the river here, there's always like a missing person thing like the next day. And he's like, yeah, I was like, I haven't seen shit on it. So, so something doesn't smell right, man. And he's like, well, what if Alex never left? And I was like, like, what do you mean? He's like, well, what if he's, what if he's deceased, Jason? And I was like, oh, Jesus. I was like, that wasn't even crossing my mind. I thought like maybe he fucked up. He did something like he did assault her and then he just ran. Like he went on the lam for a while. And then when, when me and Alex talked to him, it's like, oh, oh, Jesus. Like, that could be a possibility. And when you're talking Alex, because there's so many Alexes yeah, here. No, my you're, no, yeah, you're my Isaac. Yeah, you're an Alex at, and you guys were at uh, Ray's, Ray's Bar eating hot beef. Eating hot beef, so. okay. Okay. When so, was that in relation to when you last saw uh, Probably the weekend after everyone had found out, because I had gone to Ray's. And I guess some people had already leaked the information, like some family had told some close friends before it was released in the news. So I think, you know, family had told some of Alex's super close friends what had happened. Because me and Bree even talked the night, like the night after Alex and me talked about it. It was, it was like, it was on the weekend at some point. It was Bree, the blue haired girl, um, Larson. Yeah. Okay. The last time Mengel saw Woodworth was when he followed McCandless to his house out of concern that something was going to happen. When the police arrived and questioned the three of them, they were satisfied that the situation was under control. And when they left, so did Mengel. Um, we had talked, so like I, I had talked to Alex, my Alex, Zink. I had talked to Zink about it <clears throat> at Ray's after I had like a really weird reception at Ray's. He's like, I showed up at Ray's like I always did. Went to order a cup of coffee and like the two Wisnowski sisters, Ariel and, Ariel and Aubrey, like Ariel just like looked at me with these crazy eyes and then Aubrey went in the bag and started puking in the trash and was like what is going on guys I'm like can I get a cup of coffee is everything okay she like put in a, a cup and then she just walked back and she like got on the phone just like talking to me on the phone like on the, the work phone like I don't know what to do he's here and I was like uh what is going on and I just like a to go cup and I put it in and I left and I was like got home and I was like Alex um Stuff is not kosher at race. Like something is going on, and he's like, "What do you mean?" I was like, "I don't know. I got a really weird reception from the girls. Like we've been, no, I've, I've walked them home a million times and never drunk. Like we've, we've been friends for like six, seven years." And I was like, "Something is going on." He's like, oh, "I'll go check it out." And then he left, and he came back not too long ago, or not too not too long after, and he was like, "They found Alex." And I was like, "All right, so where did where they find him?" He's like. Here in Wisconsin. They're like, oh, well, like, they, they take him into jail and stuff. And he's like, they found his body, Jason. I was like, oh, Jesus. He's like, yeah, he's, he passed away. I was like, like, do they know how it happened? He's like, no. I was like, oh, okay. Well, shit. He's like, it was like something I had already kind of started to process since our conversation I raised. Because it, it wasn't even in my peripheral vision up until then. So, did Sheena, Sheena want to report this John situation right away, or why did it take so long to finally get on board? I have no idea. It I mean, did it take a while, right? I think it's just like a habit she was in. You know, like, she, she didn't report it immediately. Fuck, no, no. I mean, I've, that's one of those things where it's like, I do see, like, you know, I, I, I know women that have been victimized, and they say, like, Immediately, they want to go home, take a shower, and just, like, forget about it. And then, like, a week or so later, they finally get, like, the strength where, like, they want to go in. But by then, any evidence is gone. So, I was, like, when I talked to some of my friends about this, like, 
not using her as the reference, though, like being like, they said, yeah, it's, it's a very common occurrence. Like, people don't usually go right to the hospital mm -hmm. and report. Yep. And yeah. I was like, why would you do, not do that if someone has done this to you? Like, why would you not just go in right away? And she's like, well, like, the, I think it was Amy or one of the random girls that I was talking to about it. She's like, yeah, like, it's not, you know, there's, she showed me, like, a graph of, like, how many the actual reported rapes there are as opposed to, like, how many of this and how many convictions actually end up. It was just, like, this huge box of, like, all these people, like, unreported, reported, and then convicted. It was, like, one out of, like, all of these, like, 175. And I was like, Jesus. And she's like, yeah, that's, that's why it's a problem. How did like, you first come to know that Alex and John, or uh, Ezra and John had been together? Ezra and John? She had told me. And, but right away she basically... No, not, like, right away. But... When she told you, it was basically she was assaulted. Yeah, like right away, it was like she had said that, it, that she didn't want to, she didn't want to be in that house anymore, in that room anymore, because of the assault. And it was like that's why I called him like immediately, like after I found out about the, all this stuff. So it was like I want, I mean, I I have one guy that I trust, and I have a person I'm supposed to trust, and I don't know heads from tails. And that's when I started running down some of the stuff she had said to him. Well, he was giving me. You know, if we kept changing his story over time, I would have more more details. And that's what made me start to wonder, like, well, is he lying? Then? And that that was the call that was made from from the hotel. From the hotel. Okay. Yeah. And that was prior to any report to law enforcement, right? Yeah. So did she want to go report that, or did you? I asked her pretty much. That was when we went on that car ride and we were driving for a little while. I was like, well, what are you going to do? Like, what are we going to talk to the police about this? Or are you going to like? What is your plan for this? And she eventually decided. I was like, I'm going to support you either way. But like, you know, if you, if you don't report it, it's just because like, if you don't report it, how do I put it? Because like, it puts people on the radar at least, like for possible, like possibility. Like even if it is, like you don't want to defamate somebody's character and ruin their life and all that kind of stuff. But also like, if people start to see a consistent habit of this stuff happening. And someone keeps popping up a couple of times. It's like, well, maybe this is worth looking into. You know, like if the same guy has a lot of accusations from people. Mm -hmm. I mean, then it could be like, you don't know. It's like, you know, the, the, the accusations with all these senators and stuff all the time. You never know anymore. Yeah. Do you have any time reference as to when you patched Alex up? There was a public argument at the coffee shop between Mingle, Woodworth, and Hanson over the affairs. It was heated, but did not become physical. McCandless claimed that Hanson assaulted her, but would later admit that the relationship was consensual. I just looked yeah, for that today. I tried to find it. I couldn't. What's your best kind of estimate on that? It would have been after the John. It was after I had gotten back. No, it was before that. It was before this fifth. fifth. It was before any of the bad stuff had happened. So it had been before February. It was. So it was after I came home from the Redwoods. So it was after November. But it, I'm guessing it was mid or late December. Because I figured, I assumed at the time that it was about like a seasonal depression thing. You know, like the holidays and like the stuff he was going through. They had, you know, I had kind of hooked them up to hang out with each other and deal with, like talk with each other about trauma because she worked at a, at, at a where she was going to school before um, Mary Nutt or whatever, or Mary, Mary Nutt. Marinette. Marinette. She was going there before and she was like a, the, what's the word for it? The LBGTQ like counselor for like helping kids like in school like talk to their families about their, their like sexual preferences, how they wanted to be identified and all kinds of stuff. So like I was going through all that stuff because he has this hyper Christian family who doesn't know that he's either, I don't know if he was bisexual or just, he, I mean, he had done with young girls before. So we were talking to Alex. Yeah. My, not my Alex, right? right? Alex Woodward. Woodward. So we had, we had talked about that before. Like, he, you know, we had joked around all the time. I would, I'd be like, oh, you're the sexiest of the Alex group. Like, you know, and we they give each other shit. It was like, oh, the first Alex group, they all died from syphilitic infections. You got to control yourselves, Sean. It was like, my Alex, him, and there was like three or four more Alex in our friends group. It was like, I can't let the beta Alex's die, man. You guys got to control yourselves. Like, I know when you guys get in the room, you all look so good, but like... But we had a good rapport for so long, and it was like, that's why I was so, you know, I'm like, you hang, I'm going to be gone with Josh. Josh just got dumped. He went through some horrible shit. So we're going to go to Redwoods. We're going to go see a place on our, there's so much life. 
and he's going to smile, and he's going to have a good time, and then we're going to come back and we're going to be better. Because, like, I had the abortion thing happen, so I was pretty downtrodden, too. So like, we just need to go out there, free your minds a little bit, get back to nature, you know, see some, like, thousand-plus-year-old trees. And so, like, but she would get suicidal a lot of times. Like, when I would go on to D&D and stuff on Mondays with Josh, she'd be like, you can't go because I feel like I'm going to kill myself or something. And it's like, why are you going to kill yourself? She's like, I just like, keep letting everybody down in this sense. Like, are you doing this because you don't want me to leave? Threatening suicide to prevent a loved one from going to an activity they enjoy without you is a common abusive and manipulative tactic. Like the house, is this like a power play? Like, is this like my one day to go do something we're away from you? Like, because we, we get stressed out sometimes. Or is this actually like a thing? She's like, yeah, I just, I don't, I just want to trust myself right now. She's like, do you want me to call Julia? And a lot of times I get a hold of Julia, but like, she's like, oh, like, what? Well, can I report, should I report you? Should I call this up? She's like, I love, you know, someone did that to me once and I, I never forgave them and I wouldn't talk to them. It's like, yeah, but like, why are you saying this to me if I shouldn't be scared? Yeah. I'm about to... Oh, I, I ate a bunch of pizza before. <laughs> That's such a bad idea. But uh, I'm like, you can't do this to me. Because I... The, the medical and like the, you know, like the, the side of me that empathizes a lot with people, you can't just throw that at me and then make me be like, I'm just about to bike away, go relax and just go to a different world for a little while and play some nerd games. And you throw this at me, to make me feel like I have to come and take care of you. Mm-hmm. And I was like, is this, is this literally something that you're just going to keep doing every Monday? Like, all of a sudden, you just, like, your life is spiraling out of control. Like, the one time I get to, like... So can you kind of just tell us about how you came to know... Had Alex cut himself of any significance? Before that? No, the time you did have to kind of... Oh, yeah, it was pretty deep. Okay, but did you think he tried to kill himself? That's the thing. Is like, I don't know, because like a lot of times, I'm not sure if people are educated on the problem. Well, there's some Instagram going back and forth. You commented that you didn't think he... I don't think he was trying to. He was to, trying to, because was, he didn't cut his arm right away. Yeah, because it was like it was very deep, but it was this way. And I think it was maybe he was drunk. He didn't feel how deep he was going. But like, a lot of times, it's like people will do that for show. They'll do this, the straight ones for show. So he, he went this way. He I, went this I way. was looking down. Okay, yeah. I'm not sure. I can't remember if it was passenger or driver's side arm. But how did you know about it? Well, she had asked me to come over and take care of him. He was over at Alex's house? Yeah. And, like, his roommate, Matt, was still there, and we talked a little bit. We were, we were very casual, and I was just like, and I kind of put it over the sink, and I irrigated it out, and I cleaned it all up, and put, like, one or two little things in there, and some, uh, like, there's, like, this super glue stuff that you can use for, like, um, closing up a wound. It's like a, I can't remember what it's called. Dermabond. Mm-hmm. And uh, he had just told everybody that it was like the steam wand burned from that work. Because, like, the, the baristas, they had that wand that you eat the, the milk and stuff up with. So he had it wrapped. Because I gave him a bunch of, gave him some curl X and I gave him some tape to wrap with need to be cleaned. But, why was he doing it? She. Afterwards, it said that it was a either leave Jason or I'm going to kill myself thing. As we said that, yeah, like at the at the moment, I didn't. She, she didn't tell me that that day, but like later on, I mean, I asked like I kept telling because we, we sat upstairs and we like I gave him a big hug, we smoked some cigarettes like we always did, and I was like, dude, shut up. Guilt over the affair with his friend's girlfriend may have also prompted Woodworth's actions. You can't like you can't do this kind of shit, man. Like you only get one shot at this, you know. So was she with you at that time? She was with me. She was like sitting like next to me. But I mean, I mean, together you're a couple. Well, yeah, we're still a couple. Yeah. Okay. And did he ever try it again? Did he ever communicate with you? Hey, leave her alone. Leave uh, uh, Ezra alone? Yeah. No, not really. I mean, we had one talk where I was just kind of like, God damn it, man! Like I can't believe you did this to me. Like what the fuck? It's like I mean, I was gone. You're doing all this stuff behind my back, being all shady. I was like. I thought we were like family. Like, I came over past your damn ass up. Like, what the heck, man? <laughs> Why do you think um, he would have liked her? She's female. Well, because the the fact that she, she said that he, he was... She said that she was his chance for, like, a normal life, pretty much. Like, he would never have to explain to his family that he was more into, like, younger boys. And she... So she could be, like his younger boy, but he would also have the social normalness of just being with the girl so his family wouldn't judge him. I mean, everyone said that when his family came to 
really collect all his belongings. They didn't bring his philosophy books with them. They didn't bring, you know, a lot of the things that actually made Alex Alex. You know, like how many conversations me and him had about, you know, Sartre and, you know, Kafka and all these people. Like, that was a huge part of his life. So it's like, even philosophy was like something they didn't believe in, like, according to their religious beliefs. And it's like, they didn't want to bury their son. They wanted to bury an idea of what they thought their son was, you know. So was he... Did you have conversations about that? About his, I guess, his preferences? Well, his problems with the family and his preferences. Oh, yeah, we have drink Greenville, or not Greenville, but Berg off once in a while and get really trashed. Like, after me and my ex had split up, me and him, he's a kind of a regular at the joints, so like, be like, all right, let's split a picture, it's happy hour. Like, because I know he would work in the mornings usually or work at nights at race season. Or he was there the day that me and us were met, you know, like, so we were hanging out at the bench. I, sh- I came to, Get up, uh, I came to block up my bike by Terry's biking store. I got flat on the way home from work. I pounded on the window because it was after midnight. And now I was just like filled up a two-go cup and stuck it out. And I was like, it's fucking closed. And I like, closed the door. And I was like, all right. And I sat down inside. And Ezra was laying on the uh, on the bench and stealing Wi-Fi. I was like, what was that sigh about? I was like, oh, it's just been a fucking rough day. <laughs> but, yeah, we talked till like 4 in the morning that night. He came out and like chatted with us. We all smoked cigarettes together. And, you know, like, we were always, like, good friends together. Like, I don't know. Okay. Um, what's this whole boy thing, though? The like boy that, thing? Yeah. I don't know what... The, like, her being a boy, or, like, him... Well, you were at the court, right? Yeah. And you heard about what she... Yeah, you know, there was, like, the carving, right? right? I don't know if it's to do with... I don't know. If, did they ever figure out for sure if it was him or her who had done this? After McCandless murdered Woodworth, she carved the word boy into her arm and claimed that he had done that while he was attacking her. Doctors later said that the injury indicated that it had been self-inflicted. Who had mutilated or whatever? Well, she admitted to doing it. She had, she had carved it in. It was probably to do with like her being his boy. You know, like, because... I mean, if, if, I, if I were to conjecture at anything, it had, it had, it had to be something to do with that. Okay, so... This he cuts himself by all accounts December-ish. Yeah, sometime in December. So I tried to look for him. Yeah, that's fine. So from December until March, what's going on between them two? Are they having rendezvous when you're not? I looking? think it's like I'm gone for a drill weekend because Alex, like my Alex, I should just start calling him Zink. When Zink, <laughs> Zink would be like, "You'd be gone, dude." She'd be like in the shower and out the door, and I was like. I mean, that's all this shit for a man. He's like, well, I figured, you know, like, she was just hanging out with friends doing photo shoots like she did sometimes, but also, like, sometimes she wouldn't come home. He's like, and I texted her sometimes and asked what's up, and she'd be like, oh, I'm just hanging out with friends. And, like, sometimes she would, like, go over to John's and, like, babysit, because he has a son, Warren. Sometimes she'd babysit Warren so John could get, you know, a day off, do stuff. And, I mean, we were all very friendly back then. Like, our friend group was, we felt pretty tight. Like, we trusted each other. I mean, at least that's what I thought was going on. We all trusted each other. So she's not working or anything. Or no, she wasn't working. So at she's kind of needing a place to stay too. Yeah, and I wasn't even sure if she was working when she was working sometimes, because like she'd be like, "Oh, I gotta stay later. I do this or I do that." And it's like, I don't know why Joanne's is all of a sudden super busy and super not busy. Like, she she's like, "Well, I was like, did you get fired?" Because there's a point where it's like, "Did you get fired?" And you're just like not going to work, like or you're just going somewhere, like hang out. Because I don't understand how you have you don't have a hundred and seventy dollars, like. We're splitting it three ways because, like, back then I rent was cheaper. It's like $170 is so cheap. It is insanely cheap for rent. Right. Like, how can you not afford this? Especially since, like, we drink pretty much free coffee at the coffee shop. Because, like, most of the reasons we just tip them. And they were like, oh, it's not big. You guys are here every single day. Like, All right, cool. Okay. So, like, I don't know, dude. What are you doing? What are you doing with your life right now? Okay, you're gone to, like, questionable amounts of time. Did she ever complain about any sex with Alex? About um, him getting like there was there was a, there was complaints about like um, how did she put it? Um, I can't I don't know the terms for this stuff, but like where someone forcibly gags you during like oral fellatio, like they just won't, won't let you. There's a name for that. I can't think of what it was. There's so you also can't breathe basically. Yeah. Um, sodomizing, like she, like the, she was not into like that kind of stuff. But I think maybe it was like more of a making it more 
um, realistic, I guess, for his side of the, his side of the, you know, to the point thing. Yeah. And so I was like, so would it be primarily anal sex then? I mean, I don't know. I wasn't, I wasn't completely privy to it because like every, I was trying to, at the point, like, I was trying to be very sensitive approaching this because like not only being like an ex, but also like, I'm not well versed in this kind of stuff. Like I'm not, you know, I know how to talk to some people about these like traumatic things, but like I'm not going to like straight up ask someone to dump all their shit because right. I don't know how to, I don't know how to respond to it or deal with it. Mm-hmm. But she made it sound like it was primarily, you know, I don't know, from behind, whatever it was. And a lot of times, I don't know which orifice, but was she mad about that? Or not I don't know. Like, not, was she enjoying it? Does it sound like? I don't know because like that was another one of those two two way things with that with us or like you know sometimes she'd be like she'd say I mean we never participated in that because was, I'm very like OCD as shit and I'm like I'm not going to be involved in anything I don't want to get Mengel does not have much information about this subject and as the ex he probably didn't want to any information that he does possess also cannot be considered accurate since neither of his sources could be considered trustworthy. I'm just not involved in that. It's not my jam. So uh, I was like, she always expressed like a dislike for that. So I was like, yeah, good. We're on the same, the same. Uh, we're on the same page. Anything but stuff, you know. Anything but. And, uh, but I don't know, like the way because like Matt, you know, the fellow that lived with with Alex. He said that there were times where she was over, so after we had split up, I had we like, split up for good, you know, she would talk one way about me, and she'd be like, yeah, I, you know, I just, because I think that was the day that she had left me, or she had, which is confusing, because, like, she was over at her parents' house, she had said, playing cards and stuff. Well, then I found out, like, just out of the photo, you know, you can see, like, Alex, like, just his arm and his sleeve and stuff sometimes in some of those photos she sent me from her parents' house. And I was like, oh, so, like, she was at her parents' house with Alex. She introduced them and all this kind of stuff and whatever. Well, she must have went back to his house that night, and that's when she had messaged me the next morning, like, I, you know, I, this stuff happened. Or however that worked out. There was a night where she was at his house or at her parents' house with Alex. I'm not sure how it worked out. I used to have this more together back... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know anymore, dude. It's, it's so <laughs> much in my head. Did she ever uh, read you her journals, or did she, she email those to me? Yeah, I think so I, you've seen them. Yes, the silence broke or whatever. Yeah. So what did you make of any of that? I couldn't tell completely. It sounded like a lot of. It was this painful stuff to read. As you read through it, could you determine who she was talking about? Yeah, in each paragraph. Not each well, paragraph. Well, like, as you got back, um, so who's the love of my life? <laughs> uh, probably me, but I don't think it was. I think it was more pandering at that point. I mean, he, being she wanted you to read this. Is that well, I don't know. She, she said she did these for therapy, so maybe she did, was talking to her therapy. Maybe it was one of those like I didn't know what I had till I lost it situations where I was just like, well, I don't do do overs. I don't read date people, man. Like this is not this is not something I want to continue doing. I don't want to continue continue like taking care of you. So these therapy journals were wrote with the therapist from Stanley then? I believe so. Okay. Are you aware of any other therapists that she went to? Not that I know. Okay. Was there any therapy that got ordered for her before the abortion? I don't know if they do that. No, make either. sure that. I think that they might consult. Uh, they might counsel you about that. But like, I'm not sure if you have to. If you have to have one. Okay. I know that the only thing that I remember because I came back afterwards to pick her up and stuff. And I just remember them. You know, talking to her about like if she wanted to get the depot and all those kind of things, but okay. they don't bring more counseling. You got another one out of there? Hey, yeah, I just know you can go ahead. I got um, I'm not trying to jump around here, but I'm trying to get some of the questions that I have answered too while he's looking through that. When you guys went to the doctor first and she got, it was found that she was pregnant, mm-hmm. and she asked for place that she could get an abortion. Yeah. Was that one of the places that you went to then, or is that something she found separate to that? 
Uh, I think she scheduled one, and she was just like, oh, this is great. It's like a day after my birthday. Happy birthday. You know? But was that a number that was given to her by that clinic or wherever you could? I think so. I believe it was. Do you know where you went initially to when she was? The, which clinic you went to? Yeah, which doctor you went to that said you were um, pregnant? Was that the, the ER? Or it or was the surgery? urgent care, um, which by, I think was Mayo. Okay. The Mayo Urgent Care down, it's so like right across from like where, where the Dunkin' Donuts or whatever it is now. There was a slim chance that McCandless spoke to someone at the clinic and admitted who fathered her child. And someone there might have noticed something about her mental state. So like, there's Sacred Heart across the street, uh -huh. and then if you come the other way, going towards like um, Bollinger Field, yeah. you take a left, there's that clinic there. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, the Middleford campus. Middleford, yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure it was there. Did they give her a brochure or something that would have had that? I'm not sure if it was a brochure or not. I know that I think they gave her like um, care, like you know, they give you the care packet for like things you have to do, like like for if you were going to continue. But they also gave her like the whatever information about you know who to contact and like. I know she had talked to somebody on the phone that same day about it, and. They said, well, it's not like, because you want to go that day. And I was like, they don't do stuff like that. I was like, mm -hmm. once you find out, they make you wait like a minimum, I don't know how long, before they'll schedule anything because what if you change your mind? Like, mm -hmm. Right now, you you might be freaking out, but like, you might change your mind. I don't know. It's up to you. They didn't, they don't make her have a counseling appointment or anything prior to? I don't know if they did. Okay. I don't know if they did on the phone counseling. Okay. Because a lot of those places do make you do some kind of counseling before. And uh, I don't know, so that's why I'm asking. Um, well, we got really he's looking through that yet. I pulled this up on Google Earth. Is that the house that you're talking about? It's not the best image. It's street view, so it's... There is. I don't know. I think that's the one. Yeah, right over here. We can, oh, yeah. we can certainly slide up and down the road a little more to get a different view of it. The straight-on view, it's all blocked. Yeah, I think that's the one. Okay. I don't, the, I don't remember there being that many bushes. There might not be all those bushes in front of it anymore. Yeah. I don't know when that... I, remember, I feel like you, saw, you could see the house very vividly. And if you get at certain angles to it, you can see it fairly well, but... It's like one of those things, like, I remember whenever I go to the Hoffman Hills, so I, I like to climb that fire tower every once in a while and just see the, because you can, you can see, like, so far, and it's all the colors in August and stuff. But, uh, I'm trying to make a little better view of it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. Okay. The red door is, like, what sticks out, like, in my mind. Like, I think it was the one with the red. I mean, yeah. Just so we can. Did you two discuss these journals at all? Well, yeah, we talked a little bit about it. I said, I'm glad you're doing this. Like, this is probably good for you. Like, it's good to get this all out of your head. And, I mean, it's kind of like a little bit of, when you, when you put all that stuff in the paper, like, it's therapy, man. Like, Well, we know where we are now. You know, we kind of know what transpired. Uh, I guess, what are your thoughts reflecting back on that? Reflecting back on well, I mean, how did she get to the point where she drove away from you that day with Eau Claire PD standing by? And by all accounts, more than likely, based on what we know, drove right there. Drove right to that place. Yeah. I have no idea. Like, I know that when I, when I was at the house, so I sat across the road from that place for quite a while with my bike and just, like, smoked so many cigarettes. And then it took a lot for me to, like, go into the house because I was like, knocking on the door, and I think when I cracked the door open and they heard my ringtone going off, and I heard her yell, just let him help you, I was already at the point in my head where I was like, I'm probably doing something that could get me in trouble, but I fucking care about these people. And I thought, like, she hasn't left. My initial thought was she hasn't left because he's going to kill himself, and, like, he's going to do it right in front of her, and I was freaking out, like, oh, God. She pushed him too far. They're both fucking fragile. They shouldn't be alone together. So I ran upstairs, and, like, I was like, oh, my fucking God. You guys scared the shit out of me because they're both in this bedroom, like sitting on the bed. And I'm just like, what the fuck? 
is doing. You can't do this. Like, you, you should not, for what's going on and what you're writing and what has happened apparently in this relationship, you should not be alone together right now. Like, you guys both need to, like, go to public place. You need to, like, talk things out. Because there was screaming and arguing when I, when I was downstairs. This was shortly before the police arrived. While Mingle was waiting outside, neighbors became suspicious and called to report his behavior. So, did you know what they were saying? I couldn't hear anything what they were saying, but there was arguing. Could you tell both, both of them? It sounded like, well, they both kind of had a feminine voice, so. Okay. But, you now then I came outside and I was like, if you guys need me, I'm going to go back outside, because like, I'm like, do you guys want me to stay here? And they're like, no, you don't have to. And I was like, okay, I'll go downstairs, and I sit on the front, I sit on the porch. You know, if she starts acting crazy, I'll because he's got these stacks of books, like, everywhere. Like, you throw a book against the wall, he starts acting crazy, you throw a book against the wall, I'll hear it, and I'll come back up. And I was only, hey, halfway through my first cigarette out there, and then he, uh, the police showed up, and I, I gave them a statement about what had happened, and, like, another car showed up, and, like, another car showed up, and I, was, I kept giving the report. And they went to go talk with them, and that's when they were at, at the moment exiting the building. So then I think they split off and were questioned separately. And I had talked to one of the cops about it, and I was like, so, like, what's the plan? And they're like, well, they decide they're going to go someplace public and talk. And I was like, sweet. All right. They're listening to reason. Good. You know, and I was like, can you guys, like, can someone follow them? Like, and they're like, no, they're, they're grown adults. They don't have to be followed. And I was like, I don't, I just don't trust them very much. And they're like, well... That's, it's not our job to go off like the hunches of you guys. I was like, I suppose, like, that's a bad waste of our resources. So, I was like, well, okay. And they all drove off. And, I mean, as we're in the house, I'll just talk for a little bit. I was like, you know what, you guys, because, like, I had given them a big hug, and we had smoked together, like, one last time. Which I didn't mean, I know it was the last time, but I was like, you know, you guys, you guys are still my friends. You know, like, on the battlefield, like, you have to treat the enemy and your soldiers. You don't, it doesn't matter, like, who, you know, that, it doesn't matter. Life is important. It's not so much that you guys fucked up. You're 24 and 26, you're 21, like, because you're young. Like, mm -hmm. you have so much, so, so many more mistakes to make, dude. It's going to be fine. I don't like what you guys have done to me. You guys are making me crazy, but, like, still fucking people, man. Did she ever, ever get so upset at you for anything that she... Not lashed out at you or never physically threatened you verbally or anything. No, she never threatened me with anything. She usually just fall to her knees and like have an asthma attack pretty much. Like she'd just start hyperventilating. Like the last time we got up to Hoffman Hills, we had hiked for a little while and I was like, I just can't deal with all this lying and like all these all like the stuff behind my back. I don't know what's going on. Like what is going on? And she just broke down and like was on her knees crying and like hyperventilating. I was like, It's fine, you can tell me the truth. I don't care. I just, I want to know how I can help you. What were the pages of the Ted Bundy stuff on your phone? Since both McCandless and Woodworth were calm and cooperative, the police had no reason to interfere further. As they told Mengel, they can't act based on someone's feelings about the situation. In this case, unfortunately, Mengel's feelings turned out to be correct. Well, that was stuff that she had, I had taken off of her phone. Cause I, she had left her phone at the house once. So I pulled those up because she was talking. I think she was trying to like profile John. She was saying like, "Oh, this is like this is like John's profile. Like he's a you know um, schizophrenic, or not schizophrenic, um, class whatever um, personality type. I don't know. She was trying to like profile him, saying like, "Oh, this is like, like treating it like it was evidence almost. Like, oh, this is like what he's like. You know, this is what he's like." And I was like. He can be a little weird, like he's got some stuff going on. He's got I mean, brain problems and stuff. So it's like, I mean, there's not all the screws in there, but I don't know if she was trying to like strengthen her argument for the, the raping thing, if it happened or not, or not. Like, I don't know. I pulled that off of her phone, though. So she hasn't been communicating much with you then, though? She still calls once in a while. Like, I get a call from like Dunn County Jail, but I mean, it's like you have to put money on the thing, and I'm like, I don't know, I'm trying to, like, get my life back, you know, like, people are finally talking to me again, like, and, like, not that, not that it's people talking to me, but, like, people are actually, like, are you doing okay? I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm all right, I'm not doing the ringer, but it's nice to, like, yeah. slowly start stepping away, and then it's, like, at the thing in the mail, it's, like, April 2nd to 27th, it's like, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs>
But as I figured, like, if she's changing pleas and stuff, I was like, well, there's probably going to be more investigation because... What about that? What do you know about that? What's all going on? Well, I mean, wasn't it initially self-defense? And, like, I was like, unless something... Because, like, you know, there's all these assaults that she claims in the past. And I was like... So I... At first, I was like... When I heard about what had actually happened, I, I was... I was almost okay in the courtroom up until the point when they said 16 times, and I pretty much like lost it. Like I couldn't, like my, I, I, I was like, this doesn't make any sense, you know. McCandless stabbed Woodworth 16 times in the head, neck, groin, and torso. Because like that doesn't, to me, I was like, I don't understand. Like, and I thought, well, maybe it was like the horns. Because like someone said, like, well, maybe they, it was a deer horn, and it was this, and they, they did what they were still. Detectives at the time were still unsure about a weapon. It was like, I guess if she took those horns out of the bag, or with one of them, like that could make a lot of punctures. And like, she also doesn't know much about anatomy. It's like, if she, if he was attacking her, like, she, I mean, she's not going to know where to hit on a person. Like, I don't think she's ever put up a fight in her life. So I was like, if he was aggressing her and she had a chance to get a weapon away and fight back, I'm not sure she would know. I mean, now, most people don't know self-defense stuff, like, you know, so it's like... Are you aware of anybody talking around here or racist about Alex Woodworth attacking any other woman? I had heard he was kind of creepy sometimes, like, I don't know. But that's one thing is, you know, what do you mean creepy versus actually physically maybe want to attack someone? I don't know if there was any other attacks. I just know that he had... Strange relationships. Like, there was, like, a weird pseudo him and John thing. There was a weird pseudo, like, he was seeing, like, maybe a guy with a kid or a girl with a kid. But then she, like, completely cut things off and, like, wouldn't talk to him anymore, or, like, in public or anything. Because we drank and talked about it once. It was like, it seems kind of weird that, like, someone, I mean, if you're, if you trust somebody enough to be intimate with them, like, you, why would you just all of a sudden, especially if you were getting to know their kid and stuff, it just seems like it doesn't make any sense. But, like, it made me think that maybe some of the stuff that he was interested in sexually was, like, something that people were not interested in. And, like, they were like, I, I don't with the situation. Like, so, you're saying, so you're saying maybe potentially in a sexual way, but fully not to your knowledge. And not by knowledge. Like, the way she made it sound like was he wasn't really respecting of all the boundaries sometimes. Because, like, people can always say, like, at some point during consensual sex, it can immediately become unconsensual sex because they can be like, no, this is done now. Yeah. And, like, a lot of times it's like, well, sometimes men take it, like, as, a, as an ego thing. And they, they get all bent out of shape. It's like, well, now that you're happy, like, I, I can't be happy or something. It's like, no, that has nothing to do with it. Like, at some point, if the person, male, female, or whoever, is not wanting this to con- con- continue, they have every right to say that this needs to stop. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, that's why, like, you have to have good communication with people. So, I think maybe are you, situation. Like are that. you aware of any violence that they have? Like physical violence? Yeah. I've never seen him get violent. Okay. Are you aware of any time that he made somebody go further sexually than they wanted to? Or I mean, stop? Physically made them go further? I can't, like, be completely sure. Like, it's a, like, unreliable narration, you know? Okay. Like, the way she made it sound like, was this for me or was this the truth, you know? Mm-hmm. It's, like, so hard to understand any of this stuff. It's like, I try to help out as much as I can, but. I'm only fed this information from, like, besides the hard facts that I've seen, like, I've only been fed this information by, like, a person that I can't really trust, you know? Okay. Um. Oh, app, I'm not sure if you guys... I, like, wrote that... That was one of those things I wrote down where it was, like, a... Uh... Text now. App. I think that was what she was using to like uses it uses your phone over Wi-Fi to to, te- to text. So it gives you like you you uh, add your email and whatnot to the thing. It gives you a generated phone number and then that's your phone number that you can send messages as if it's a phone from Wi-Fi. So that's what she was using to. How would you communicate with Alex Woodward? Uh, messenger once in a while. We didn't talk all that much, but. I saw that at one point a lot of our stuff got deleted, and I was like, that's weird. Like, it was deleted from, like, his end. Because, like, the last time we had, I remember talking about, like, painting D&D figures, 
I had painted this one guy and it looked stupid because he looked like it was a naked man because I didn't get the coloring right. So like, mm-hmm. it just looked like he had no pants and stuff on. I was like, I sent it to him and he was at the coffee shop. And we were talking about Lucas the Spider and like just stupid nonsensical memes and stuff. But what time period did you feel like got deleted? I don't know. I thought maybe it was after. I didn't. I didn't really talk to him much after all the stuff had happened, besides in public. But uh, I feel like maybe the family or somebody had gotten control of his account and was just getting rid of anybody involved in the situation, or something. I don't know. Or maybe he deleted. I don't know. <clears throat> so getting to the alleged, what is this alleged assault between Alex and Ezra? Yeah, I don't know what that means. Either. Was there such a thing? She made it. She made it sound like the night. She made it sound like so the, the night where she watched the movie with him, the little prince or whatever night, that he had kissed her. Like they went on a walk and she kissed her and she said no. Uh, but then the night she said that like she was assaulted by John, is what she said. The, the the first assault or whatever. She said that something had happened there where uh, she had gone over to Alex's and then he, so it, what did it work? It happened that night. And then apparently again in the morning, you know, and she didn't have anywhere to go. She didn't want to be at the house. So I think she said she went to Alex's and she was hanging out with Alex. And then he got extra handsy with her about the, about, I don't know, like later at night sometime. I don't know. But I was like, I, I don't, I don't know what that means. Like, she was going to him saying like, you know, all this bad stuff happened and he's just like, are you still down to like mess around or something? It's like that seems like the most insensitive thing. It's like, well, I don't know if that's his personality type. Like, it was like that's like is that reflective of what she wrote in the journal then? Um. Mingle tried to help both McCandless and Woodworth, but he recognized that they were both unreliable sources. While he tried to ensure that both received some type of help or support. He was uncomfortable not knowing how much of what had been told was a lie. I knew what had happened and went to my other friend for advice and concerns, voicing my anxiety and guilt towards our friend friendship to only once again for it to turn to his desires of making me the boy. That's kind of how the situation. Like the John thing. Right happened. after the John thing, she went to him for like, you know, like to talk with him. It was like, hey, you know, this just happened to me. Like, what do I do? What do I do? And then, I ate all that pizza, Willie, man. You should have waited and we ate with you. Oh, man, you don't want toppers, man. It goes out as fast as it comes in. I think it might just be... I guess, is there anything else that we haven't even dwelled on, talked about, or anything that you're sitting here thinking, boy, you guys, you got to ask me this? Uh, I can go through some of this if it pops out to you. Uh, Can I take a shot of that first thing you had with the movie night? Would I be able to take a picture of that? Oh, yeah. So you said she's tried to call you from the jail. Have you accepted any of those phone calls? I talked to her once or twice. Yeah. I talked to her once or twice, but it just got to be too much for me. Because like, okay, you know, how long has it been? Uh, it's been months. Probably been a couple months. I talked. I was pretty. In the beginning, I wrote her a letter, but then like all these letters started flooding in. I was just like, I can't. Because I thought, well, maybe if I just, you know. Keep in contact with her, make her feel like, hey, you know, we're just still. Like, I don't know. It wasn't like mm-hmm. for for her; it was more for me. Just yeah. be like, I fucking love the shit out of this person. <laughs> and, like, I just want to make sure that this was or find out like if she's okay and she's doing okay and if she's getting some help at least. Because like this can't all be for nothing, you know. Like, mm-hmm. but have you ever went to the jail and visited her once? Okay, and that was. Initially, early on, or? It's pretty early on still. Okay. But, yeah, I dropped off a book, a Vonnegut book for her to read. A what book? A uh, Kurt Vonnegut book. I guess I'm not familiar with it. What is that about? Uh, he's just, uh, I can't remember the name of the book, but 
It was a book about like artists and writers and stuff like that. And, and it was one of those books that we both we both read quite a bit. But what do you recall? How do you, how do you come to know there's a change in plea? I saw it on the internet. Well, actually, I think Jenna messaged me, and she's like, oh, she changed her plea. And I was like, huh? And I researched it, like, everybody. Because, I mean, I didn't really look into it all that much. Like, the only way really updates every once in a great while, and I stopped going to the hearings because it was just too much, you know. I think after the, the one where I heard about the stabbing and all that stuff, I was like, I don't think I want to be here. Did her family talk to you or reach out to you at all? Or? I've talked to Rosie every once in a while. I get to them, like, I hope you're having a good holiday. It's like, I miss you guys sometimes. And, you know, like, she had, like, a, a little sister that... Super cute to hang out with, but uh, once more, like, I've never known how to approach any of this stuff that I, you know, to talk with them. Just like when she moved out, she took a lot of stuff. It was like it's getting cold out, and like half my winter clothes she decided to steal. And it's like, oh my god, it's, uh, there's never a comfortable time to have these conversations, you know, because it makes it sound insensitive. Like, hey, I hope you're having a good holidays. Also, can I get a bunch of my clothes back because I'm cold and I want to go buy a bunch more, you yeah. know, money scarce too, yeah. Um, was there much discussion over why she changed her name or what was really going on there? She's, so she liked the, um, the book Into the Wild. So it's like based off of, uh, the guy that goes off into the wild. But, uh, I'm not sure if Ezra was somebody important to her in her youth. Like there's a person named Ezra that she really felt that was important. But, uh, the mechanicalist part is based off of the, the kid that burns up his cards and like goes to Alaska. Okay. She always talked about wanting to go out to Slab City and like live on the slabs for a while and then travel around. And McCandless had experimented with her name and gender identification for years before making these choices. I mean, it sounded like fun. Like I have that same wanderlust all the time too, but I think it was more, you know. Would she know how to get to Huffman Hills herself? I mean, she was pretty good at directions. I, I don't know. Um... What about driving into a muddy dirt road? You know, at that time of year uh, where anybody who's driven any amount would look at that and be like, I might get in, but I might not get out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what kind of risk taker was she there? I mean, it's her car. Yeah. She's not paid for the tow or whatever to get her unstuck. Well, that's, did they ever figure out, because they said there was a driver that drove by and saw them, like, before they had got in, gotten into there? Did they ever figure out if he knew who was... If the, the seat placement and stuff, because she was tiny, like the seat would have had to be super far forward, like if she had been driving. Well, I mean, I guess she could have moved it too. I don't know. Yeah, that account is based on the witness, so it is what it is. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, if you're in the passenger seat, what are you thinking? I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> that's, that's what that's what right. I mean. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and it's like, if, as soon as it got stuck, like, that's the other thing, like the phone was like disassembled and stuff they said. It's like, I would, I got, some of his friends said he was doing this like data thing where he's trying to data purge. Like Alex was just like not using his phone very often. He's trying to take a, a break from the, the internet. And I was like, oh, that's, that's expected. But like, because I said it was, it, at first they made it sound like his cell phone wasn't on him. And I knew she had no way to call. So like if she were to get stuck, she'd have no way to call. So that's what confused me about like, so they get stuck in the woods. Like, why isn't the first thing, you know, done, like, a call to, like, hey, we need to get back out of here? Because, like, he has a phone still, you know? Like, what did, why, was it, like, was he in, in control of the vehicle, and he's like, this is where we're going to go, and we're going to have this conversation, like, because he still wanted to be with her, he wanted to move to, like, Portland or whatever with her or something, and, like, he was going to go get his master's and stuff, like, I mean, we, we had talked a little bit, like, yeah, you're fucking smart, too, like, go, go do your life, man, I so I, I don't have any animosity, you know, but I don't know if either of them were like in the, it, I guess it depends on who was in that driver's seat was in control of the situation, the scenario, and whoever brought the, the knife or what brought up or whatever it was, it was just used. Like, I mean, if did they bring it, was it already in the vehicle? Like, because I mean, I was in the vehicle a couple days before, and I don't know if I recall seeing one. There used to always be one in the, uh, the center thing, and... I don't know if there was one there before. Well, you've conversed with both of them, okay? And we're looking at this from the outside looking in, too. Mm -hmm. She goes to Alex. Alex don't go to her. Yeah. She blew into town. You didn't even know she was coming to no, town. I didn't know she was coming. And I can go through Instagram, and you guys are talking daily multiple times a day. Yeah.
McCandless was the one that instigated each interaction and didn't tell anyone she was coming prior to her arrival. I mean, just like clockwork, I'm up, what are you doing? I mean, it's just going daily. Mm -hmm. But they aren't. They're not talking at all? I mean, we aren't seeing that kind of exchange. That's why I'm just perplexed. Why all of a sudden she goes there? And he, I mean, is this accurate? I mean, he really seeking her out on a daily basis. She's in Stanley. Yeah. So is he just moving on too? His plan was to move in with this Samantha, right? Samantha K. Yeah. I think I think they were all. I think initially they were all going to move in together, right? As were Mango too. Yeah. Right. So I guess is there anything you recall that Alex is really? This is, doesn't seem like he's so infatuated that he can't live without her because he is on a daily basis. Well, You're with her more than he is. Well, at yeah, that, but, at that I mean, I still love her to death. I was like, this is never going to work out. You're too insane. Like, I can't handle like, this amount of drama. I'm too old. But uh, I know, they said he was down at the bar quite often. Like, just like the, the who did I talk to about this? Where he was just like, yeah, fucking blah, 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 blah. I lost to another guy. And it's like, you know, lose to me. Like, I don't, well, I'm not trying to win anything here, man. Like, you just were not a good person, apparently, sometimes, and she just didn't want to deal with it anymore. I mean, him cutting himself would be one sign that, okay, I want you to leave Jason, but that's a long time ago. Yeah. As far as months, weeks go, and it doesn't seem like well, she's, she's telling you I'm leaving you and I'm going there. No. I think Matt would have a better understanding of, like, what was actually going on between the two of them, because he was, he was living there, you know, and he was seeing these interactions. I don't think... I think she was trying to, like, keep it um, off of, like, the internet. Like, they just would meet up at his house. Or, mm-hmm. Which explains... Um, sh- 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 Big bearded Viking looking man. But reading your story on Instagram, it seems like you're trying to work things out. You make it together. You have probably... I'd say from reading it and reading between the lines, you got together sexually yeah, we in March. Yeah. When she'd stop over. So it ain't like you're trying to part ways either. Um, but it was mostly just like, I'm depressed and losing my mind and trying to figure things out. But like at the same time, it was like, I don't know, man. Like you're, you're confusing me. Like now you want to have a baby with someone. You just aborted a baby. I am so confused. Like, like she was up and down and left and right. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on anymore. Were you, you know? seeing any other girls during that time? No. Uh, I mean, I think I was pretty much now a single. So basically, she's kind of keeping you here for her stability, maybe. I think she was like still like pandering to me or something, like trying to like keep me in case things didn't work out with other either ways. So I was like, I mean, I was being naive. I, I, I my roommate says I get fucking invested in people because I see the best in them, and then they always burn me. So I was like, yeah, like the assessment by Mingle's roommate is accurate. Mingle should have distanced himself from both McCandless and Woodworth. If McCandless had directed her anger toward him, Mingle could have easily ended up as the victim instead of Woodworth. You know, we'd, we'd hang out and be like, yeah, nothing's going to happen. It's me, fine, we'll just hang out. Like, and then like, you'd slowly like get talked in and coerced into stuff. And be like, oh, well, we've been together before. And it's like, oh, I'm, you know, fine. We're gonna, uh, you know, it just got to be one of those situations where like, I just need to stop being around you alone because I don't want to get... I don't want to get emotionally involved again. I still, you know, it's one thing to love someone, but to be actually in love with them. Like, I still cared about her well-being, just like, you know, I care about anybody's well-being. What other kind of notes or comments did you come up with there? Did you kind oh. of try to detail out some So I had things that have been asked. Uh, color of the knife, clothes in her shoes, uh, sexual preference, history of violence, uh, the phone and the DNA they took for me, uh, the weapon like horns possibly, cutting his attempt at the roommate, driving uh, her upset, the seat position, why I, I biked over her therapy and journals, uh, his verbalization after she ended sexual behavior slash sodomy, choking, fear of STD, HIV, and use of protection, forced to use, uh, forced to use protection slash skin or oral lies about past relationships. Well, that was like an hour that. Because he was lying about being with her. He's, I think there was a lot of lies flying between everybody over there. Past assaults. Uh, over there? Where, where do you mean? 
like over in that whole like John Alex slew okay. of nonsense going on. Um, uh, her meeting Alex on his coming out. Um, the abortion October fourth, uh, two thousand seventeen. Books given, texts, long paragraphs. I'm Ezra talk. Shameful dismiss. Oh yeah, that was another thing. Is like every time they would talk, she'd just be like. He, he talks to me like I'm an idiot. He's like, I'm Ezra. I don't know what to do. I'm Ezra. I don't know if I want who I have feelings for anymore. I'm Ezra. It's like she was like, she would go over there after th- after things were satisfied sexually. It was like now all of a sudden I'm just annoying to him and he pushes me away. And it's like then I think she started realizing, oh fuck, oh fuck, I fucked this thing up with Jason. Now I don't know if, I, if Alex even wants me around. But sometimes he acts like I'm like the moon to him. So then she started, I think, messing around with the John thing, or like, like flirting with John, and then all of a sudden all this happened, and it became a rape, and it was like, I don't know what's going on. Um, his relationship never being public, uh, Alex John. What do you mean by that? Oh, like, Alex never, like, talked about his relationships in public. Like, he always had relations, like, he always had stuff, but he never really talked about, like, what was going on, because I think a lot of it was, like, he didn't want, uh, stories being, like, reaching his family. Um, John and Alex, uh, the personality distorted stuff that she was researching, uh, misinformation from law enforcement, drinking and drug habits. Did she use drugs? Uh, she would She would smoke once in a while. I know. I know she was smoking once in a great while, but uh, she was drinking a lot with those guys. And I always told her, like, you're not 21, dude, and like you can't really handle all this. Like, it's different. If it's a couple of us like having a social drink together, but like. She would go to the bars, apparently, and, like, someone would sneak into, like, these bars, and I was like, you, you, you're going to get in trouble. You're going to get your friends in trouble. You're going to get a DUI, or not DUI, uh, an underage. You don't have the money to, to fucking pay for drinks. How are you going to a bar and, like, risking this kind of stuff? Um, this was all, like, this stuff, like, that the, uh, the question under medication and being... So I was kind of perturbed at that point in my life because I got pulled out of the bar. I don't know who I talked to that time, but I got pulled out of the bar three pulled out of the bar three pictures deep when they took my phone that day. I was not a very happy camper. I kept telling him, I'm very drunk and I probably shouldn't be talking to you. I can talk to you tomorrow. And he's like, Oh, you look sober and I'm getting my cheap. Okay. Mangle is struggling to wrap his mind around what happened, which is often the case of those with close ties to a murder. He knew both the killer and the victim, and as empathetic as he is, he must have constantly reviewed everything that happened and wondered if he unwittingly contributed to the outcome or if he could have done anything differently to prevent it. What's going on? I'm going to take your phone. Well, why are you taking my phone? I want to look at it. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like, well, why? There's pictures of my junk on there and stuff. He's like, that doesn't matter. I've seen a lot of penises. I was like, okay, well, shit. <laughs> I was like, this isn't feel like the least procedure, man. I'm hammered and sad. <laughs> but... I mean, that was like uh, stuff that's going on back then. Uh, DNA sample. Oh, they, took, them. they took my DNA like oh, okay, a so couple days later. After they had told, that was like the whole like misinformation from law enforcement. You're not a, you're not a, we're not looking at you as a, a person of interest anymore. And then like showing up the next day, like, can we get your DNA? And it's like, oh my God, man, you guys are hurting my brain. I thought I could, I'm just starting to like figure stuff out. Um, <laughs> uh, Text now app, her phone, his phone, her laptop, Facebook, Instagram, his laptop, slash his journals, uh, his sexual interests. Uh, when confronted with, uh, when confronted, no signs of remorse. That's when I was talking to him about, like, what the heck, man? He's just like, hmm? like, are you gonna take care of her? Like, you know, like, uh, like, I don't know you guys are together or something now. Like, he's like, no, oh, maybe. You know, like, he just was always very nonchalant. That was, Alex was always... Yeah. Like, he was just didn't seem... He, I think a lot of times he tried to put on a front about being, like, above and beyond. Do but you remember when that was? Or when that kind of... No, I really... I mean, after the suicide attempt? Yeah, it was after the attempt. It would have been quite a bit after the attempt. What was he saying and doing when you're patching him up? Was he crying? Or was he, like, dude, leave me alone? Like, no, he, he was... I being, wish I'd have done it. Um, he was being kind of, like, just... Like he, like he seemed like he fucked up. Cause like, I kept that saying to you, I should really report this or something, man. Like I feel like he's like, I don't want people to know about this. And I was like, I know, but like, are you okay? Like, why is this? Happening? He's like, no, I was just drunk. 
and Zabker gave me a knife, and I was drunk and laying in bed and fucking around, and I, and I slipped and cut myself. And I was like, this is a really convenient spot to accidentally cut yourself out. So I'm like, I'm not a complete idiot. He's like, no, I was just drunk, and I was fucking around. I was like, well, I don't know. It kind of looks like you tried to do something. And when you got there, was it a pretty fresh cut? Or? It was pretty fresh. There was still, like, you know, the marbling and stuff, and mm-hmm. it was pretty deep. But I think that was around, because it had to be after Christmas, because it had to be after Christmas, because that, Eric Zucker gave him the knife that he claimed he accidentally cut himself with. So it was definitely after the 24th. Yeah. Sweet. Um, control through bodily harm. Mm-hmm. What's that mean? Like, the, him, I'll cut myself if you don't leave him. You gotta be with me. I don't deserve to live. I'll jump off a fucking bridge kind of talk, you know. Uh, talking with others about... He kept talking to others about a boy he was seeing. Like, my ex-girlfriend, they said that he had been talking with her, and then she found out later on that it was uh, Ezra, and then she was like, oh, wow, I need to do with this shit. Um, her internet searches slash his, because, like, he was, she was looking up all that weird Bundy shit and stuff, like you were saying, like, personality disorders and things like that, and I was like, seems like a weird thing to be like, I don't know, like, is she built a new case? to, like, protect herself from the John thing, or, like, what is going on here? Because she's like, I've seen a lot of parallels in these people that I'm hanging out with right now. Like, they're very, like, this, you know, they're very silver-tongued, and they're, like, coercive, and they're, like, they build you up, and they kind of, like, what's it called? Like, they preen you, or they pamper you. Um, groom. Groom. They, like, groom you into you know, what they want you to be, and then um, demanding immediate responses, uh, withholding affection is punishment. So, like, I was, like, he would, he would just shut down emotionally if she, like, made him mad for any fair reason. Like, these were all, like, things we were talking to, because like, I was like, yeah, like, I don't know, like, he, I, I don't know, I, I don't know why I'm super involved in this, like, it's really hard to be the ex-boyfriend slash, like, trying to be, like, keeping you mentally stable. That's why I was like, you should probably talk to some people. You should probably talk to some people. McCandless and Woodworth both exhibited toxic behaviors. Together, they would have been unable to sustain a relationship and may have reached this point even without Mengel in their lives. Like therapy-wise, um, not telling her what she did or said wrong, expecting you to grovel for forgiveness, uh, forgiveness about things, patronizing her opinion, uh, love bombing to ease bad behavior, so like being really shitty and then also just like being like super affectionate for a little bit. Um, Creating a purgatory of ambiguity about the relationship status, so like never like setting like whether they're dating or not dating or dating. Uh, trust based on sexual preference. I'm not sure what that meant. Uh, subtle but extremely real forms of emotional abuse. Uh, insulting, constant put downs, interspersed with words of love. So like, you know, it's just, it's just beautiful how stupid you are sometimes, you know? It's like this weird psychological shit that people do sometimes. Like, if you create, like, negatives and positives in sentences, it makes people more interested in you, apparently. I I found about this, like, not too long ago. That's what he would do? Yeah, he would, like, because it creates, like, it's just wonderful how how, how lazy you are. You know, like, you you mix a positive with a negative in a sentence, and it just makes these people, like... What? Like, it's, it's supposed to intrigue people, apparently, or something. She said... She started seeing signs that he was doing this all the time, like, like a positive with a negative. I don't know. Um, that's the constant put downs and interest with words of love. Uh, silence and refusal to communicate. The psychopathic research. Smart talk. I don't feel guilty for anything. I feel sorry for people who feel guilt. That was one of the things that she said he had said to her. Like, I don't feel guilty for anything. I feel sorry for people who feel guilt. Uh, the entropy slash nihilist, uh, nihilistic talk. Uh, pretty much that. I think it's nihilistic or something I forgot to ask you about or maybe the first page there. One thing just to clarify, <laughs> you said about uh, he would mock her. <clears throat> Is that Alex would mock yeah. her? Yeah. Okay. So he would... Woodworth. Yeah, he would get his... He would have had his... After, just said after, like, little things were done, there would be no, there would be no like, actual, you know, reciprocation of, like, cuddling or any kind of stuff. So it was very cold a lot of times, and then 
it would just be like, she's like, well, you know, do that. I'm going to go and do this, and like, or whatever. She would make something. He would find a reason because he, he he was very intelligent, but at the same time, like, I think he often thought very very highly of himself. So he did like to mock people and give people a hard time. And okay. She just wasn't like one of those people that was emotionally good at dealing with it all the time, especially when it's like serious decisions, like. You know, what she's going to do with her life, what she's going to do with her friends, like how she's going to deal with like the John thing, you know, like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm Ezra now, I think it's rape, you know, oh, I'm Ezra and I don't know, but it's like, you know, how would you feel like if, I mean, from her perspective, I guess, if you went to someone for, for counsel and like to like be told like that everything's going to be okay and then they have sex with you again, but then they also make fun of you, it's like, you must be losing your mind at that point, you know, like, who do I even trust? Like, I burned the bridges with one of the, with me, I should like, she pretty much burned the bridge with me at that point. So I was like, I'm not dealing with this. So you know, Alex and Jenna are pretty much my closest friends. Like, and they live, you know, so she's not going to be able to deal with them. Mm-hmm. So like a lot of her other friends are fairly young. Like they're not going to be able to help her and deal with these things because they have financial obligations and stuff like that as it is too. So like, she's at this point where she had no, no, nothing to hold on to besides her family. And What's the fear of STD? Because he didn't use protection, I think, a lot of times, she said, I think. But she, she would say, like, because especially with, like, the act that was going on, like, there's like there's a higher chance of, like, conduct, the contracting, like, an, an STD. And he had already, she said that he had lied to her about how he had been, how many people he had been with, and that he had been, like, celibate for, like, how long, since, like, high school. And I was like, because we were talking about, like, oh, I thought that he was... Yeah, but that was odd because, like, me and him talk about stuff, you know, because, like, he was in a relationship and he got really sad and then he got, you know, they were just seeing a Sarah girl for a little bit and it didn't work out and she's like, well, what's this bullshit? I was like, I don't know. Like, I'm just saying, like, you need to talk to him because if you guys are, if you guys are practicing, you've already had one abortion. That's what I'm saying. You're like, not on any kind of protection. You're also having unprotected sex with somebody that you don't know sexual history from. You haven't had this conversation. Like, you guys should probably do this because... I mean, he's a young, he's a, he's a broke college kid. This is how people end up you know, with kids and then like divorced, you know, and you're, you're a child right now. You're acting like a child, so you can't be raising anything, you know? But was she worried about being pregnant or was she more worried about getting an STD? I mean, there's I only know. one way you get pregnant. Yeah. If his understanding of the relationship between McCandless and Woodworth is correct, then McCandless had multiple reasons to harm Woodworth. So if it's not happening that way. Yeah, I think it was more with the, the sexual, because after you start to, like, lose trust with someone, it's, like, hard to, like, well, would they tell me if I have herpes? Would they tell me if I have this? Because, mm-hmm. like, you see that so often where people, they just neglect to tell somebody, like, there's this whole new fad of people just not going and getting tested. It's like, well, if I don't know, then I can't be lying to people. It's like, that is insane. They are an insane person. You just refuse to get tested, so you just be like, I'm clean. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> How do you sleep at night? <laughs> kind of just to confirm a, a, the timeline from February 7th to when this occurred, she went and stayed with at mom's for a while, correct? There were nights when she was at her mother's house. Okay. Was there a time when mom kicked her out of there and said, I can't deal with it yep. anymore? There was a spot where she was kicked out completely. Did she come back? And stay with you at all during that time? Or? I think at the time she got kicked out of her mom's, I got her a hotel at least one of the nights, but then I think she moved in pretty post haste with uh, Joe. With Joe Shane? Because yeah. she was going to, I think she was intended to live in that that little house they had at the end of the road, or near the end of the road. Did she come over to your house at all there was after times, that? There were times where she would just be in the parking lot in her car crying, you know, and I'd be like, what, you know, there was one time where she just needed my help. Uh, to, for, for paying the uh, the parking tickets. Okay. She's like, here's the cash for it. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, I, like, so I, like, you you need to do these things if you want to have a job. Mm-hmm. Like, I was still trying to be, I don't know. It was hard to be like in between, like someone you still care about, but like so, not knowing if you're being used or not, and trying to be a friend, but also there's like this odd sexual. So she stuff. brought you the cash, but couldn't go do it herself, or you had to give her the cash. She brought me the cash because. Uh, you have to pay online for tickets, apparently. So she had okay. to she had to have a credit card, and like she didn't have any other way to do it. She didn't have credit cards. Okay. I don't think she had. A, she might have had a debit card, but I'm not sure. Was it a city of Clear? No, uh, I don't. I think we went out somewhere by. 
you, Stanley? I don't know. It wasn't, I don't think it was no player. So it was parking tickets? I think there were like some kind of parking tickets or something she had to pay up. And they had to be paid online? They had to be paid online. Because I was going to say, when we walked in, we seen somebody paying. Oh yeah, they paid right in the parking desk. Parking ticket right here at the front desk. Yeah, this was a different place. Okay. What was that broken gun stock for? What was that kept in the car for? Oh, we found that a long time ago. I went to do my annual training. We were, we uh, wandered around like an abandoned building. Oh, that was that? That's what happens. Okay. Oh, she wasn't with you then when you found it. Hmm? She would have been with you. Yeah, yeah we were in Wisconsin Rapids. Yep. So she dropped me off when I went to do my one month of annual training. This oh. was like years ago, or like this was like the very beginning of our relationship. Okay. So that had probably been in her car forever. It was like a. Like just the butt end of it, like a broken, like all. And um, there's the armory, and then just down the road, there's like an old abandoned building near outside, just taking photos. Because that's like one of my favorite. Like I take a lot of photos, which is like, it's kind of helpful that I take so many photos all the time, because like it does help me a lot and remember these things. But do you I, take photos on anything other than your phone? No, not really. I never really, I never use the DSLR that often. It's just so much more convenient just to use your phone. Mm -hmm. But I mean, Jenna has Jenna lent, has lent me her her camera once in a while. But just I mean, she would lend it to Ezra once in a while. But I don't know. She wasn't very good at taking care of things. Like she wouldn't put the cat back on. She just throw it in her backpack, and I think that ended pretty quick. <laughs> McCandless wasn't a very responsible person and relied on Mingle to perform many tasks she should have done for herself. This was another method of manipulation in which someone makes the other person feel as if they must stay in a relationship to take care of them. So it seems Ezra rebounded pretty quick after the abortion situation. I thought that she was dealing with it way too well, because I was like, this doesn't seem like, you know, it just felt really, really weird. It felt really weird how she was. Did you help pay for it? I did for the whole thing. And you didn't, weren't for sure it was even yours? No. I mean, I was I was pretty sure at that point because, like, I mean, I didn't have any doubts. You know, I was I was under the impression that, like, you know, when I would go to a drill, that I, I saw her so often besides when I was working. You know, and when I'm like, what else are you going to be doing? She just hangs out the house most of the time. Or how much did it cost you? Know, it was seven hundred and some bucks, I think. Which maybe kind did of did you pay cash or did you? I, I think I used my card. Is in the cities. Okay. Well, it felt super depressing because, like, I, I showed up there. And I, so I knew she didn't have the money for the stuff, and I was like, "Well, all right, like, this, this is gonna be a shitty day." And I was like, "We got there. We got to the place. I sat in the waiting room with her for a while. So I had, they had to give her some stuff beforehand, like, wait for it to kick in or something. And then she's like, "Okay, you can go." And I was like, "You don't want me around?" Because I was like, "I can hold your hand, like, be here, like, to support you." Like, even though I don't, I'm not 100 percent behind this decision, like I'm still, you know, if you, if you need me, then she's like, no, I think it'd be better. I don't want you to see me like that. And I was like, all right. So how far along was she that it was pretty early? But uh, was there a lot of discussion between the two of you about that matter? Not too much. I mean, I was, I'm pretty trusting. She so. made up her mind about it. Oh yeah, like, I mean, the way it is now with the climate, like it's mostly just the guy's job to just be there for support. Like, I mean. There's so much push for like it's a woman's choice, their body, their choice, all that kind of stuff. It's like I was said whatever you know, as soon as she said she wanted to abort, like that same day in the clinic, like my heart kinda of dropped a little bit, but I was also like, Well, oh, it's not my body, you know, it's not really my decision. She talked to her mom at all or no, she didn't want to talk to us. At first she said she didn't want to talk to her mom about it, and then she said she did, and she kept wishy washing it. I was like, Well, like let's just figure out this stuff before we, like let's just figure out what, what we have going on right now. Because like after a month or so, or after however long they make you wait before you can do it, you might be changing your mind. So, like, just, like, sit, reflect on it, think about your life right now. Like, do you want to be raising a kid? Do you want to be doing this? Do you, want, do you have the finances? Do you have, I you mean, know, you have to think about it. But also, like, think about me. Like, I mean, I don't know. It was hard. It was a hard situation. She was just, like, backing down from a lot of it and shutting down emotionally. Did she ever bring it up much after? All the time. Then she changed her mind to like, oh, I, I wanted it so bad. I was like, you literally told Jenna and stuff, like, I need to get this fucking thing out of me. Like, you, I look back at those texts, like, there's a sense of Julian stuff, and I was like, 
what the hell? You made me feel horrible. Like I was a monster. Because she would tell friends, oh, Jason wanted an abortion. And just, it's like, but then you were telling other people the opposite. I'm so confused. Like, I'm super confused. Because, like, I, I was just letting you make the decision because it's your body. I was just there. And then as soon as, like, the cash was paid, it was like, you should probably leave because I, I don't want you to see me this way. So I'm wandering around the city feeling horrible, like, thinking that, you know, that it's mine. And then later on, like, months later, I'm thinking, is that even mine? And, you know, it was, it was a lot all at once, like, you know. Have you thought that more and more lately? There is a strong possibility that McCandless suspected that this was another man's child and used Mengel to quickly get rid of it before it was apparent it wasn't his. I mean, I still I mean, think... I don't know what you know. I mean, I, mean, like I, mean I don't know. It's possible. I mean, it, it, anything's possible, apparently. I, when I left that apartment that day and I saw him drive off, I thought she's going to come over later, grab those scrubs, or maybe get sushi or some shit, you know? So you thought she was coming back to your apartment that night? And yeah, I was going to say congratulations for getting, because she was getting her TV test right the next day. Okay. She was starting her new job. She needed to pick up scrubs because yeah. she didn't have money for scrubs. Mm -hmm. It was like, that's like when we were talking when they left, was like, you guys are fucking driving me crazy. Like, you guys scared the shit out of me, man. Like, it's like, I don't know what's going on here, but like, Christ, like, get your shit together and go to a public place to have these conversations, you know? I figured I'd see her later on. We were gonna be, she's going to go to work the next day. Like, her next day was, like, her first day on the job. And I was like, none of this makes sense. None of this makes sense. Like, when I called Joe and found out all that stuff, I was like, why would she risk this all? What is going on? She's not supposed to be driving, apparently. She got a ticket, like, the night or two before. She's supposed to get the kids off the bus. I didn't hear about any of this, you know? She's gone. No one knows where she's at. She hasn't responded. That's why I sent them. I was like, don't, don't tell me you just threw everything away to come to Eau Claire and argue you know, or do whatever, drop off these things, you should have just told Joe. Well, then I realized that she didn't tell Joe because she took the keys and she wasn't supposed to be driving. Well, like, all this stuff, like, none of it made sense. It was like... So she wasn't welcome back to your place, really, Alex? No, Alex... You're, you're Alex is kind no. of put the brakes on, we're done here. No, Alex and Jenna were both like, we don't want her around. She would show up sometimes and just be like, do you want to hang out and talk? And I'd be like... All right, we'll sit in the parking lot and talk a little bit, but, like, I, I don't want to get in the house, man. It's just too much. At that time, were your roommates um, Alex and Jenna, or...? I don't think Jenna was living there yet. Okay. I think Al uh, it was just Alex, but Jenna, would, you know, she came over quite often. Her, she was living with Alon and Dieter, um, but they kind of, like, broke their lease and just you know, moved in with their significant others, so she was kind of in the transition period of also just being super lonely there by herself and mm -hmm. trying to sort things out. Okay. Yeah. You guys have anything else that really jumped out at you? Is there anything else that you can think of that you're saying, geez, maybe they ought to know this, or... I don't know, like... It's like just, I just... It has to be cute, you know, like, it's there's so much stuff. Oh, yeah, like, absolutely. it's like, if you tell someone, draw me a picture, they're like, I don't know what to draw, but if you say, draw me an animal, like, yep. you immediately think, yep. like, horse, you think, like, cow or something. Yep. Well, and a big thing for us is how much direct knowledge do you have, you know? Yeah. Direct, direct, like, well, you know, what's Alex think and do? You're getting that from Ezra. Yeah. And not a whole lot from Alex. I mean, you've had some contact with Alex, so having some drinks about his past relationships, but mm -hmm. you don't have a lot of direct observations regarding those relationships. Most of, most of his, like, did they ever follow up with Cord and, uh, um, what the heck's his name? Nick? Is it Nick and Cord? Those are like his two best drinking buddies. They're also philosophers. Oh, his. Yeah. Yeah, Cord. Cord and, uh, and I can't think of the Nick's, whatever Nick's name was. There was a whole mess between that situation, too. And fucking, what do you mean? That whole, like, whole group of... Everything was going to shit in this Are they all the philosophers? Yeah, they were all, like, the philosophy so kind of guys. So what's going wrong with the town? Well, like, the whole time... The, at the same time that the, the Ezra-Alex you know, Alex thing goes on, there's, like, a sex worker in town who uh, they're trying to get into Bolton Refuge House, but everyone's having sex with her and stuff. And She's jumping out the windows for drugs, and I was like... Oh, you guys love, like, everyone is going crazy around me. I'm just trying to, like, keep the, my few friends alive and happy, like, and keep a little bit of my mental sanity. <laughs> like, 
So it's like the more you, you, the more you dig into it, you're just like, how much weirder can this get? This can't get any weirder. And it just gets more weird. And it gets more weird. And you're like, I don't understand up and down. Like, I walked, when I first walked into that courtroom, or the, into the, you know, the people were talking on either side of the thing, you know, and walking down the hallway when the first thing happened, and somebody from the defense was talking about stuff, and talking to the DA, and they were all talking in the hallway. And I go to this, I see like a, Aubrey and Harold and all those people, like, and I go over like, give them a hug, it's the first time I've seen them. As level-headed as Mengel tried to be, it is clear he was in over his head. McCandless was able to take advantage of him far longer than she would have been able to with someone who could examine her claims in a critical rather than emotional manner. Since I'm puking in the garbage that day, and I fucking miss them because they're like my little sisters, and as I pass, you know, I hear someone on the sidelines saying like, well, it's a lot easier to prove a homicide than a rape. And then it's like people chuckling and stuff over here. It's like, this is like a fucking show to these people. Like, I've lost two people I care about. Like, one's in jail, one's dead. Like, this is just all like reality TV to these people. Like, everyone's showing up here like it's fun. And it's like, I'm glad you guys get to take a vacation in my trauma. Because I get to live through this every single day. Like, me and Matt, like, we talked once in a while. It's like, this is our lives, man. People can go like, so come are they in. the Alex Defenders, or I mean, more on his side? Yeah, it was just like, I'm just like, I don't understand, like, why this is fun to people. Because, like, mm -hmm. it's super painful. Like, just early before you guys came, I was going through to try to find that date for the for when he cut himself. So, like, I went through, like, probably two or three months, you know, of texts back and forth with her. And it's, it's heartbreaking to me still. Like, I think Real seeing that stuff, and I'm just like, my God, what the hell? Why was no one talking to, like, for trained professionals? Why wasn't she coming... To me, like, I, I'm, I'm trained somewhat in these things. Why wasn't he going to somebody, like... But you didn't see it coming either, No, right? and everyone assumes that I, like, would have known. They're like, you lived with her for so long, you never saw a single sign, and it's like, I'm not to blame for this, man. Like, I could have never thought, you know, and, like, it took me a long time to forgive myself. Like, walking into that, that house that day, you know, I already thought I risked things. And, like, you know, the cops had left, and they were going to go and leave and go to wherever place they were going to go to. But there was still part of me that wanted to take the keys and just drive them someplace. You know, just abandon my bike there for a little while, drive them someplace, and then, and then come back for my bike. But I figured, like, I already went into a house when she had offered for me to come in, so I wasn't sure if that, you know, was breaking and entering or any of that kind of stuff. I was worried. It was like, I want to jeopardize my military career by, like, possibly kidnapping people. You know, because, like, if they don't want to go someplace and I'm taking them someplace, like, I don't trust you guys. I'm taking you guys to a coffee shop. I'm leaving you there. Like... I didn't want to get in any further than I already was in, you know? Okay. But I still felt weird. I still felt like a weird vibe. And I was like... So she was playing in some messages to you like she was mad at Alex. Um, and she said she wanted to, like, take some books back or take a book back yeah. and tell them off or something. She he had, he had given her some stuff for Christmas, I think, and that's what she was going to drop off. Yeah, like, she still uh, hadn't done that as a March here? No. I think that's, like... Maybe why she went to the races. She thought he was working. I think she definitely went to races because she thought he was working. Tell him off about what? I mean, what was she going to tell him off about? And it's like he treated me kind of as a possession. And yeah. Well, like all the joking that was going on because like that whole crew in the back of races, it's like a lot of close guys. And it's just like, I had freaking guys come up to me and be like, oh, so is, is Alex done with her now? Is she single again? And I was just like, you guys are fucking horrible people, man. Like, these are people's lives. Like, you know, you got John... And, and Alex and all of them, it's like, you don't even mess around with each other enough. Like, maybe you guys are mentally strong, but, like, you play, like, these manipulative games with each other, and, like, this existential, nonsensical, like, nah, nothing matters, man. Like, that's not healthy, dude. Like, you push people around and you mess with their heads too much, they're going to break, you know? So I thought it was, just, like, stupid that these people that are apparently are friends, you know, there's fucking all this stuff going on at the coffee shop. And, like, you know... Maybe human life doesn't have value to you guys, but, like, she's already been hurt by how many men in her life, you know, and this is just, like, a game to everybody now. Do you feel she really ever had a relationship with him other than sexual? With uh, Alex? Yeah. Did they love each other? I mean, he said that he, he said that he thought he loved her, or he, he told you that? The night that we talked outside, so, like... I forget what night it was, but we were outside races. I was kind of being a dick. There was no evidence to suggest that the relationship between McCandless and Woodworth was more than physical. So I was pretty pissed about it. I was like, man, fucking 
you know, I kind of had my idea like this stuff was going on. So I started sleeping on the couch because I was sure, I was sure she was messing around, but I wasn't sure who it was. I was trying to like in my head think like this got to be some something sketchy going on. Like I just get this vibe. So and she'd always be like, "We'll come upstairs. We'll come upstairs." I was like, nah, I don't know. I'm sleeping on the couch. I'm fine. I'm fine. Like, oh, come up here. You're like you can sleep. We can mess. I don't want to. So like, I wasn't sure if I could trust her. I didn't want to get fucking herpes. I didn't want to get fucking hepatitis. You know. I'm like, no. I'm just gonna stay downstairs. And I was just like, I sleep downstairs like every day. I was like, uh, I don't. Know. It's not a big deal. It's my back. Oh, I put back in the bed. She moves too much. I'm trying to make excuses, but I just didn't trust what was going on anymore. Well, then I found out, and I was like, God damn it, it's fucking Alex. Like, fuck, man. I'm like, because, like, he's one of my friends. And, like, also, like, dude, I was there. How'd you find out? I just found out through the grapevine. Like, and I went to talk to him at race. So I was like, hey, can I blow my smoke? And he's like, yeah. And I was kind of a dick about it. I was like, yeah. You, like, take things of mine, I'll just take some things of yours, man. He's just like, oh, what is that supposed to fucking do? He's like, I know, man. And he's like, we should probably go outside and talk. And, I mean, even though I can be a dick sometimes, I usually try to diffuse it with humor. Because, like, life fucking sucks. But, like, I mean, nothing's worth, like, getting in a fight, beating somebody up, doing it. Because, like, people were kind of worried. It's like, no, I'm not going to hurt, dude. Like, I don't hurt people. So we went outside and we were just smoking. And we had a conversation. It was like... So, I know about all this stuff, like, what are your intentions, like, what's going to happen, and, because, like, she's not with me anymore, like, I know she's, I, you know, because we, she had already moved out and all kinds of stuff, it's like, there was all the stuff that went on with John's stuff, like, you know, are you going to take care of her and protect her, and, like, you actually love her, and he's like, I think so, like, I don't know, maybe, you know, and he, he, like, always do that, like, eh, mm. I was like, did you think about, you know, how this would affect, you know, me, like, why would, like, after it happened, why did you just feel like, you could just message me to, like, Doc, I fucked up, but, like, I think I'm in love with your own friend, and, like, this stuff happened. Because, like, I would have understood, man. So she didn't know, no, say he is in love with her. He, he would wish wash between, like, this is how he was. That's how both of them and were. When, of them when were. was this? Um. After the suicide attempt? Yes, this was after the suicide attempt. Was this after the incident with John then, or before? It was. Uh, let me think of the date. I know there's a there's a key date. It was the same day I think as. Uh, there was an event that was close to it. Was there an art show she was? Yeah, there was an art show she was going to help out with. It was around that area. Okay. I don't know if it was that same day or the day after. It was somewhere around that time though. The art, the art event that shift, the uh, mm-hmm. touch me baby, um, like live, like you could actually touch the exhibits. But uh, she was supposed to like be a model for one of the masks that Gabe Fisher made because he made all these like like masks and stuff, and they had all this art like you could. But okay. so like yeah, we had to have that conversation, and I mean we left on good terms, like. I talked with him, and I, just, I was just like, I'm just disappointed, man. Like, I'm disappointed because, like, I've had these things happen before, you know, where, like, someone's like, hey, I'm kind of into a guy at work, and someone's like, okay, like, like, is he a good dude? Like, let me know about him. Like, you know, my friend, you know, one of my exes, Brittany, we're still great friends. It's like, it's not about trusting each other. It's about transparency when it comes to this stuff. It's like... Mengel is extremely passive and doesn't exert himself, even when he's been wronged. He still allows people to use him after they have betrayed him, which only encourages people like McCandless to continue their behavior. If you're transparent with me, I don't mind. You know, and then the guy turned out to be a dick. I found her like three months later on October, like I was skateboarding, like I decided to dress as Marty McFly from Back to the Future, skateboarding over the bridge um, by uh Phoenix Park, and she's down by the river, puking in the river with a broken ankle. And I'm like, what are you doing down here, Britt? Well, I got in an argument with my boyfriend, I sprained my ankle trying to get back up because I'm too drunk. All right. So I put her on my shoulder and took her up to Stone Strip. Well, every time I tried to go outside and call a cab, she'd get more drunk. She'd order another beer. So I was like, no, we're going back to your house. She lived over by the fifth in the, the, uh, like the weird like bar, porn shop, hospital area. Okay. Yep. So I carried her all the way over there, bandaged her ankle up, put her to bed. She's like, why are you doing this? I'm like, I just don't want to be a big man. Like, 
Stop being an idiot, though. Like, what are you doing down by the river with your hammer? You know how many people drown every year? Yeah. Did she ever say why she's down by the river? Yeah, they were arguing. They wanted a private place to argue. I'm like, you got drunk and decided to privately argue by the water. I'm like, yeah. I was like, you just don't have the greatest taste in women, man. You pick people that are like, just not. I'm like, because the, I think it's just the normal people are boring to me. I like interesting people, but they all, they all end up being a little off their rockers. What a tragedy to have Israel. She was just a, like a very artistic person. Like, the way, like, we had a lot of similar taste in music, a lot of similar taste in art, literature, just like, I don't know, she was always like, some of this stuff was like, kind of rad, like her, her and John and me were all into like vulture culture kind of stuff, like you know, you find some like random bones and stuff in the woods, as long as it's not illegal, you know, like if there's certain birds of prey and stuff like that, you're not allowed to take certain things like bears and whatnot, you have to like, you know, you can't just take an eagle head home with you, you know, but uh, you know, the boiling down the skulls and then like getting them all like reach position and stuff, I mean, that, that's what's kind of cool to me, like you know, but yeah, like it was always just like the the on the, the on on the fly wanderlust kind of like well, let's just go do this let's just go to the Milwaukee Museum let's just go to here let's go you know it's like I like that because a lot of my life has been sedentary in Eau Claire as a like as a late and it's like I do miss just going and having a partner in crime like we used to have she used to have like a a Cards Against Humanity card in her car that said uh, doing doing crimes it's like. I was like sitting in her ashtray thing because like I, she was like my partner in crime. We just go off and do nonsensical things. Like you want to just drive to like you know someplace outside Stanley and just like uh, hang out in the park and blow bubbles. Just buy a bunch of bubbles, bubble necks, and just be like two idiots in the park. Yeah, sure, why not? You know, like just nonsense, like mm-hmm. break the monotony. But I don't know. At some point, I just didn't know who I was dating anymore. You know. Because it's there, like like Alex had said, like Zink had said, you know, a lot of this stuff doesn't add up, dude. Like some of the stuff she's saying, it's like she's got skydiving lessons from this time. She's looking at hey, she's doing this, she's doing that, and he's like, try to throw that all into like the lifespan that she's had. You know, it doesn't fit, man. And like Alex is always that's why he's my best friend because like he'll tell me, I'll tell him shit when he doesn't want to hear it, but it's the truth, and he'll do the same thing to me. Mm-hmm. Like you always listen to his advice. No. <laughs> I'm always listening, but I, 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 don't yeah, I, I don't always act on it. They allow Mingle to go off topic to give him a chance to de-stress for a few minutes. I feel like he could live my life a lot better than I could, but whatever. <laughs> I could live his life a lot better, too. I'm not two two fucking credits away from an environmental biology degree. Dude loves fly fishing. Should be working at the DNR. He's working at a pipe shop. Like, you're too smart for this. You're going crazy on 10 bucks an hour, man. You got health insurance. Like, come on. Well, you can marry me. Give me those military benefits. It's like, I'm not marrying you. You know what happens if I marry you? I can't, I can't be with a woman ever again. Why? I'll go to jail. You can't cheat on your husband slash wife. He's like, really? He's like, yeah. It's like, that's funny. <laughs> like, no, it's not funny. <laughs> so did you go to college at all? Or? A little bit. I did a little bit. I don't know. I want to do some more stuff. I'm thinking about this PA thing, though. So do you need some uh, education on that too? Then you actually, or is the military give you the military? Probably a lot of my things are accredited, but it's like military stuff doesn't always transfer over. That's mm-hmm. the biggest problem, especially when it comes to healthcare. How many years you got in, with Scarred? Yeah, I'm in the Guard now. So it's like probably like ten. You have any active time. years? Yeah, a little bit, but now it's. It's hard for me to like want to leave the military, but at the That's same if time, you got ten stay. So yeah, I, mean, I didn't. I wish I did. They yeah. screwed up. You know, did you, you know, if you know anybody that's still in, but they messed with the, the uh, retirement stuff. Did they? They change it to like this profit, like uh, <clears throat> so now you pay in and it's like a four hundred one k pretty much. So like they match a certain amount. Before it was like the legacy plan they call it. So like you know, you do twenty, you get so much. Whatever this one rank was. Yeah. And, yeah. This new one, it's like they're not going to pay for your entire life. Like. It's like a 401k. So depends like on what you put in. It depends on how much you put in. It depends on what they manage. How well it does. How much you take out per year. So they, they're pushing everybody to switch over this new one. And I was like, I don't know, man. That's pretty sketchy. I don't like that idea. Like, you could outlive your money so easily. You know? So you don't you don't have to switch? No, you don't have to. It was, uh, you had your choice up until like October when the new budget opened up to switch over. So you stayed? I stayed at that one. Because, like, they were pushing it so hard, and I was telling like, it's a trap, dudes. Don't do it. It's a trap. <laughs> <laughs> Open to 
looks so lucrative. Yeah, why would they be asking us to do it? They're going to save so much money. <laughs> so rancor, you know. I've been moving around now. I was a sergeant. was was sitting in a staff position. Now I'm like, I don't know. They keep mess. I have to go do some more training in February. Get my stuff back. I'm so sick of sitting in slots, getting ranked up, getting moved around, getting this, getting that. Because now it's all based off of. Um, they have a new system where before you could sit in the slots, you were automatically promoted, and then you didn't have to do your, uh, what's it called? Um, not the LC, your ALC. Or yeah, you didn't, have to, you didn't have to do any of that stuff. So you're, you're just promoted like five, kind of like a field grade promotion. Now, now it's like they make you sit in these slots, you're filling, you're retaining a slot, but then they'll, they have me training people that were coming in for my position before sending me these things because they're like, oh, you have to go research. You have to do this. You have to do that. Oh, you've used up all your training hours. Oh, train another person. Do this. Do that. Look, I'm seeing this six slot for how long, working as a six, getting paid as like a four, being a five. What's going on, man? <laughs> do they have warrants at all? Yeah. How do you get those? Uh, it's pretty much MOS specifics. Like, Helicopter repair man, okay. you know, so you have to be pretty not specific. Medical side. No, not not on the medic side. I think our only one is Chief Bear. He's like a some kind of mechanic. I don't know, man. Well, Travis, you got anything else? I'm kind of guess spent. <laughs> well, okay. I appreciate your time, man. I appreciate your service too. And Do you know if there's anything like I gotta call that number, right? Because they're not gonna make me come there for twenty two or twenty days. Whoever or who issued the subpoena to you, do you know? Was it the uh, defense or the prosecution? I don't know. I picked it up here. I Because I thought that... It was served to you? I don't know if you guys are the ones that visited while I was gone. A couple yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, we did. Because, okay. like, Jenna, the message was like, oh, was, some guys were here, some street, like, playing closed officers were here. It's like, oh, oh, shit. And I got excited because so maybe they found my bike because my bike got stolen. Oh, okay. I biked to Detroit, and I came back here, and some jerk stole it, like, two days later. Well, just because the sheriff's office served it, it could be from our agency yeah. yet, since you're in Eau Claire, or it could be from the defense, so... Yeah. It should stay down on the bottom portion of the subpoena, yeah. who who it's from, if it's from the defense or the prosecution. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen the whole... Just look at it, if it's the defense, contact whatever number is on there, and if it's the DA from Dunn County, contact them to say, when do you need me? They won't need you for that full length. They, yeah, don't, like this. they might not know yet, but as it gets closer, they'll you will communicate with them. They'll, they'll be able to give you a block of time. They might say, okay, have a response time of so much within these days. We got the same thing. They got a window like this, and we ain't going to have everybody there the first day. Okay. Yeah, because like, I'm like, I don't want to sit in a no. room and stare at the back of her head for that long. Mengel is reluctant to return to court. It has been an emotional strain already, and he was under the impression that his part was over. Well, and you'll probably be sequestered. You probably won't right. be able to sit in the courtroom anyway. You is that sequestered? Is all that... witnesses, usually in major trials, aren't allowed to have interaction with. Oh. oh. Other inter with uh, they can't listen to the testimony of oh. other witnesses. Roger that. So. Once in a while after, they'll allow you to stay. Yeah, if, you if they release you. Possibly. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's better. So it could even be more boring if you're there even longer. Yeah, you just we, sit we, in the hallway. We play cards or something. <laughs> just sit you in a room. You just well, you sit in the hallway pretty much. Yeah, usually it's like, yeah, they'll narrow it down. as the day gets going, they'll say you're going to be between maybe 1 and 3 p.m. or something like that. So... Or give me your cell phone number. If it looks like they're going to move you up or something, they'll call you. But you'll have to be close. So that, like, second to 20-second window, that's that's not going to be all. Like, every single day they're not going to be doing it, though. Oh, right? yeah. Every single day. Sure. Um, probably other than Saturdays and yeah. Sundays. They might run Saturdays. Usually not. Uh, Is it, like, a certain amount of hours every day? or Usually normal courthouse hours. Yeah, yeah just eight depending eight on what's going eight. and what they need to get. Yeah, 4.30 or 20. It could go in the evening sometimes if they got a traveling witness they need to get done. Yeah. But I think, you know, who I don't really have a whole lot to say you now. I mean, I don't yeah, know. yeah, I don't know. We, there's a lot of things that can go on between now and then. But, uh, oh, absolutely. Those, those photos that were ACs were of you know, particular concern because we didn't know who wrote Life Starts Now, but you did that. Yeah, I wrote the Life Starts Now. And that was all based on the conversation that she had with 
her father was shown. Yeah. Okay. What was Israel impetus there? Why would he think life starts now because she hasn't proven life starts at any moment? Well, I think he's just trying to pump up his kid. You know, he's he's took, he, he took on the responsibility of raising her. You know, right. Rosie, Rosie had split up with her because I saw her biological father at the court hearing it. Like I heard some whispers from her side of the family. Like, oh, that's her real dad. She has she. She's under the, I don't know if people just lie to her or what, but like, she's under the impression that her real dad is like somewhere down south, like as a traveling artist. And he's just like this cranked out dude who looked like a junky drug dude. So I see him, he comes in all disheveled, you know, dirty, messy clothes, you know, possibly track marks or just scratch marks on his arms. And I'm like, oh, like, Jesus Christ, have people been lying to this girl since she's been born? Because, like, she thinks he's like a, this traveling artist, and he actually lives in the same town. And no one, like, what is what is wrong with these people, you know? I guess we never really totally touched on it. Has she ever had any discussion with you about what happened out there? Not really. That's, like, one of the things, like, when I first went into the, uh, in the psych ward to visit her. We didn't talk about a bunch of sites like mm-hmm. art and things and music and whatnot. And she's never really talked about it much inside the letters or anything either. Okay. She's just kind of talked about like these aspirations of like how life's going to be in this and that. And, like even um, Allie, Allison Crestrill, like she's one of the girls that she used to date John for a little while. She keeps randomly talking to me about it, like, oh, I'm going to go visit her. And I've been Skype, you know, I was on the Skype call with her and this and that. And I was like, I know you want to, you know, you want to talk to me about this because I'm like the closest one involved, but like, I, just, I don't want to talk about all that often. She's like, well, yeah, you know, and she wrote me this letter and it's really hard to respond. And I'm like, yeah, I know it's really hard to respond because you don't know what to say. Like, well, she thinks she's coming home in April. And I was like, I know. I would, I would, I would try to read some of this stuff and it's like, I can't relate or I can't talk to you about this because I don't, I don't know what. What's going on in your head? I don't know what kind of drugs they have you on. I don't know what kind of mental state. But she's been reading a lot of like philosophy, or not philosophy, but, like spiritual things, I think, now. And like, at least that's what Alice, Allison has said. And I was like, I even reached out to John recently. He was going through AA. And well, he reached out to me first. He's like, hey, I gotta like, my, my sponsor says I have to make like these preparations, you know, and stuff. It's part of like my, my process. And I was like, all right. So like, I know you probably don't want to see me. And it's like, not really, but like, if you got to do it, dude. It's like we met at the coffee shop, and I pretty much, I didn't say a whole heck of a lot, you know. They talked at me, and I was like, yeah, like, do you feel any better? He just, he just wanted to explain himself more and stuff. And I was like, you know, I loved you like a brother so much. Like, you know, I fucking cared so much about you guys. And like, every fucking one of you, like, the only person not getting fucked was me, but I was getting fucked by everybody. Literally. You feel better or worse after talking to him? I felt better. It was it's just sad to see like a dude that you know, like so close to you. Like Did you learn anything out of him? Not really. Or do you think he was still sticking to his story? I mean it's another thing, it's like you don't know. You know, you never know. Like there's only two people that know. One's dead and one's kind of late. Like, not After everything that has happened, it isn't surprising that Mengel struggles to believe anyone who was involved. I mean, it's like, is she going to tell me the truth, or is she going to try to self-preserve? Like, who knows? Like, at this point, it's just a toss-up. My my worst-case scenario is just not finding out the truth. Like, guilty, innocent, that's not a worst-case scenario. It's just, like, some technicality, some bad thing that, like, gets jostled, and, like, the the case just gets, like, fucked, you know? Mm -hmm. I I just want to know why... Why, why did this happen, you know? What was your thinking? I mean, you knew about the Marinette thing. The Marinette, like her. Yeah, I mean, when she went to school. Yeah. And then, basically then the Alex thing, then the John thing. Oh, there was like so much going on. Was there any others in there? Oh yeah, I'm sure. And any that you're specifically aware of though, or? The, for assaults, you mean? Yeah, any names? I don't know any names, I know the T. I know the neighbor of Joe is one of the, the accused. I can't think of what his name is. But that was some years ago? Uh, same neighbor. Like, he still lives across the street, apparently. But years They're ago, like, though? Or when did yeah, this was apparently years ago. Apparently, when one of the nights when she was over at Joe's, she had called. That was one of the times she called me on the phone. She's like, downstairs watching Netflix. She's like, yeah, I just feel really uncomfortable. Can I just talk with you? I was like, I'm kind of tired, actually. I was, Can I just go to bed? She's like, well, the neighbor's over, and I just feel like really off. I was like, 
Okay. All right. Like, Jesus Christ, I'm sick of being the good guy. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, like, there was some cousin. I don't know what the teacher's name was, but it was a teacher. And I guess she would hang out in his room after school quite a bit. She painted a mural. I'm not sure she painted a mural. But nothing picture. like the last couple of years where we haven't filled the dots other than Alex no. and John, potentially. Alex, John, maybe Hagen's brother. But, like, like I said, like, Hagen seems... Hagen, she said that Hagen was pretty shitty to her too. But like I, I hung out with Hagen. He's not so bad. Like we randomly ran into each other at a biking event, and I was just like, "You doing okay, man?" He's like, "Yeah, how are you?" He's like, "I'm not the greatest, you know." And we chit chatted, and he said, "Like we run into each other every once in a while." Because I, I bike up towards Altoona by the fire station, because uh, that's where FedEx is. And mm-hmm. every time, every once in a while, I come down that hill at that intersection where you're gonna cross to you go by Bambury and stuff. I'll run into Hagen there, and we'll just be like, hey, can we go for a sprint? Yeah, I'm going to sprint around town a little bit. And he's just kind of a, he's an odd duck, too, but a good dude. And it's like, I don't know, I just don't know who to trust in these things. It's like, this has really messed with my ability to, like, look at, you know, for a while there was, like, law enforcement's freaking me out, man. They, I don't know if I can trust them. I'm not a suspect. They put, like, looking for bikers in the paper. What the heck? Then they show up for DNA. Okay. <laughs> like, I'm trying to be as transparent as possible, you know? And I got John stuff, like him lying. And you got, you know, all this. It's like, oh, my God, I'm going insane. I just want this to, like, make sense, you know? So that's why I started writing stuff down. Like, I'll use exact dates and the things that I know that are solid to try to make some sense of this. Well, then it raises even more questions. Because you're like, holy shit, like, that could have maybe not been my baby. Wow, that's really convenient, because if it was that... If she was that far along, I might have been in California. Like, <sighs> Once you start questioning the things you were told, the more discrepancies you may start to discover. When Mingle went back over his time with McCandless, he was startled to discover how much of their relationship may have been a lie. What is going on? Like, I don't. It's like you want to know, but you, the more you dig, the more asinine and like the more complicated. It's like those people that put the crazy string things on their walls, you know. Was there a possibility of doing DNA back then? I mean, when you... I mean, I probably could have, but like, I didn't, you guys didn't discuss, didn't discuss anything. You know, pretty oh, much just went with it. At that really, point, you were kind of convinced that it was yours, right? Yeah, I was completely convinced. And, like, it just didn't seem like it was a subject. Like, she, was, like, she just... You know, she wanted it to take care of, but like, also at the same time, yeah, like, I don't know. That actually irritated me. It was like, after the fact, she made it sound like... She made it sound like I wanted to keep it so bad but I just didn't know how to talk to you about it. It was like, that is bullshit. Like, you can't just do this after the fact, because you never talked to me. You never said you wanted anything. She's like, well, I just didn't know if you wanted to be with me like that long. I was like, then talk to me. Then why didn't you <laughs> talk to me? You know, like, this is, this is, you know, yeah. I don't know. Do you have a current phone number for John, or Wade? Do you know where he's at right now? John, uh, Hanson. Hanson? Aaron, not Rogers. One of my corpses in the cities. Grant the cops texting me too. He's one of my soldiers. His name has changed in my phone. Is that like your bike serial number on your wrist? This? Yeah. I think it's an electrical thing. One of my <laughs> one of my friends made this. John's is someone about the coffee shop. I mean I don't know. I try to, like, we, we've, we've been cordial. Like, we hang outside once in a while. Like, if I'm at race, he's still, because, like, now that Jeremy sold the place, I don't mind going back there as much, because I just did not get along with the old owner. He was kind of, I don't know, there was some weird stuff going on with that guy and his staff. I didn't abide by. How long ago did that change hands? Uh, maybe a month and a half, two months. Uh, Zach almost said it in the jam. Like, there's more kind of thing about it, though. Okay. But, I mean, Jeremy's mom was, like, struggling with cancer, so... I think they're going to move and do some stuff. But, uh, no, like, I started going back, and every once in a while I see John outside, and it's like we try to pretend like, you know, things are fine, but, like, you can still feel like it's yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, how have you been? Tell your friend Wade Bassett, just there. How's Warren? Warren's good. He's a good kid. He's like, it's like, better than me. Better than I could ever be. And it's like, I just have to try too hard, huh? And he's just like, fuck you too, man. <laughs> so I'm like, well, I don't know, man. It's like, <laughs> It's hard to like, because we used to be have such a great rapport. You know, we were like him and John Trink or Josh that I went to the Redwoods with. They were they weren't getting along for the longest time because 
Josh found out he was messing around with his sister. And he was pissed off about it because he liked he didn't like the way John treated women. You know, he's, he's like, I don't like the way you, my sister's not emotionally stable, so like you shouldn't mess around with her. So they got in a big argument, and before I got to do the, um, before I got into research, I created we played D and D together. I created an entire campaign, spent like hundreds of dollars, spent eighty plus ninety some hours like writing this stuff up, getting it ready, so I could forcibly get them to be in a room together and hang out and just play in a world where that all this shit didn't happen. Because like I, they talked to like they almost died in Spain together. You know, like, they used to be best friends. You know, it hurt me to see their relationship fall apart. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's, that's tough. And then just come back to all that stuff. I was like, I can't believe it. Like, John, I'm like, what the hell, man? I fucking loved you guys. Anything else? I can't believe it. I don't know if Brian know that or not. So. I bore you guys. No, no, no I'm I I not. <laughs> oh. I'm a weird dude, man. We had a, lot of, a lot of good information for us. So you cleared up a lot of things that we at least had questions for. Appreciate you giving up, give us a chance. Oh yeah, I didn't expect to be done with work so early. I don't know what the next one. One of the kids apparently crashed one of the vehicles, and then some other stuffs happening with mine. So we don't have enough vehicles for now. So is that seasonal then, or are you going to stay on? Or I might stay on. I guess it all depends on what. I mean, the you money's got to be good. The money's good, but like, I don't want to turn down a chance to like go to check out the Ukraine if they do offer me a Ukraine deployment and like. I don't know. Just something that doesn't change the pace. I like like I like being able to get out of town once yeah. in a while. Fresh perspectives on things. Sure. Going to Louisiana was great. In the drive to Florida probably wasn't too bad. Yeah. No. <laughs> I mean yeah, I'm be. <laughs> After her arrest and during her trial, McCandless changed her story countless times, each one inconsistent with the forensic evidence. On November first, twenty nineteen. Ezra McCandless was convicted of first-degree intentional homicide in the stabbing death of Alex Woodworth. On February 7, 2020, McCandless was sentenced to life in prison with eligibility for parole after 50 years. That'll do it for today. If you like this video and want to support the channel, there's a Patreon link in the description below where you can do just that. Thank you for watching and stay safe.